Hey y'all, how y'all feeling this morning? Sonia, oh. do you know how to change this? To on air. What's up, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? I'm feeling real good since Todd ain't gonna be here. I just co star with the Kang. What's up, Kang? and shine. This guy, ladies, look at this. You see this? You see this? They can't see it. <sighs> Who's coming up? And the world is in there. Chicago, wake up world. This is the WVOA Morning Show. I'm your host, Mays Jackson, with my co-host, Sonia Escobar. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? Good morning, Good morning. <laughs> All right, y'all, you know how we do in the morning. We gotta say what's up to the WVOA Morning Show team. So let me say what's up to Miss Jennifer Thompson. Jennifer, how you doing? I'm doing well. How about you? I'm doing good. It's hot. In this mug, you know what I'm saying. I'm, you know what? These are the days when you know, like if you had a pressing curl, like your joint would be like, ba bing, bing, bing. You You'd be because you had a pressing curl. I did have a pressing curl at See? one point, and I know I would have sweated it out. Oh, you want to talk? Oh, oh, oh. And y'all coming up, bringing up the rear <laughs> is my sometimes on time co-host. Todd Stroger. Oh, Todd, let me get you on the camera now that you're here. How you feeling, Todd? I am uh, feeling great. I uh, 
I didn't put enough time. I mean, no, I start. I got here before the uh, show started. But no, 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 no. I, See, you're uh, talking that black people on time. I didn't put in enough uh, time to clean Janine's car and my car. You know what? Can I tell you something? It's funny because I was two minutes late getting to the Dunkin donut donuts. Dunkin' uh, Donuts because while I was up and early, I did not prepare. Actually, I, I had a self-debate with myself. I had a debate with myself because I was like, ah, I could break out right now, pull up the car, move the other car, do everything. And then I said to myself, self, it would not be right if I, no, 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 because my car is in the garage and the other truck is outside. And so I decided instead of being the first person at Dunkin' Donuts, I would sacrifice my spot number one and clean off Carrie's car. Oh. And I cleaned off her car and I felt so much better about myself as I pulled out of the lot. Cause I was, I that's the, ex that's the exact reaction I hope she gives when she comes outside. I promise you, that's exactly what women love. And fill up my tank without me knowing. I will. What? <laughs> now that was, now that, I don't. That is true, but I am so grateful. My husband does that every single day. He does that every single day. He cleans off my car and he starts my car. And the little snacks that I bring, he does all that in the morning for me. Oh. All I have to do is get up. You know what? This is so much hope. Newlyweds. No, I don't want to hear anything about it. You better pray. You better pray. <laughs> Well, you know what? He's trying to ruin the curve. I don't want to hear any more about that. You know what, though, Todd? I, you know, we'll talk about that one day because I'm a, like the ultimate. I feel like I'm kind of like the ultimate gentleman. I probably don't go that far, but I do cook. You know what I'm saying? I make sure that like when we, we I take care of the food. I, I probably do the cleaning, you know, and I'm probably going to stick to doing the cleaning because the uh, cleaning people robbed us last time. Uh, yeah. What? Yeah, man. The cleaning job wound up costing me almost $1,000. Because I did not know makeup brushes were so expensive. They took the brushes? Like, and she had like a, she had, yeah, she had like a 15 year, 20 year collection of like these makeup brushes. And she, I didn't, I didn't, first of all, you know, I was like, uh, it's makeup brushes. So what? Right? And then, so, I mean, like, and it was like a thing. When I tell you it was a thing, like I'm sitting and I was like, you know, like how you chilling out and you got your feet up and it's like, excuse me. Look, like, now you know ain't no makeup brushes on in my seat in the chair, but she tore up the whole house, and I felt so terrible because there was nowhere else they could be, right? There was nowhere else they could be. We had the cleaning people, and it was like, so I, you know me, I was like, all right, well, let's just get some more. You know, what am I thinking? 75 bucks, $400! Man. And... Well, how would they? How would the cleaning people think that you would not notice that those were missing? That's what I'm wondering. I think it's the thing where it's like you're so obvious that it's like you're stupid, right? Like it was like you know, like it was funny because we were talking about it, and so we were trying to be like, okay, to the person who owned the company, like yeah, you know, you know how you do like the whole, hey, I'm just calling to say, you know, maybe did you guys misplace the brushes? Yeah. And they say, no, nope. You know, as they're asking the book the next time. So then you call and you say, okay, well, we checked out everything. We tore up the entire house. And oh, by the way, we found the makeup bag balled up and stuffed behind. The empty makeup bag balled up and stuffed behind the dresser that we never really used. So we would have never found it. And it was like, see? That, then the lady was like, see, that's why you need to declutter. I was like, you know, and, I, and on that note, I was like, yep. Looks we like I'm, you. you know what? Goodbye. <laughs> did did y'all ever see um, did y'all see uh Purple Rain, uh when Morris Day was cleaning up the house with that? That's me now. Like I be around the house cleaning up. <laughs> I got my bandana on. I got my vacuum. I'm working. I ish. One of my aunts has a company that did marketing for her. Uh huh. It's an organic house. Man, I tried that organic stuff too, man. I you know what? Can I tell you what? Let me tell you what. Oh, I like that. Let me tell you though. I don't like that organic stuff. I like to smell some clean bleach. <sighs> I'd be like, let me smell them chemicals. 
<coughs> now I hate now I hate Lysol. Oh, oh. Do you remember the Lysol in the brown? Remember anybody remember that brown Lysol that used to come in the brown bottle was liquid and they would pour it in you and they, oh it made the, your place smell like an old folks home. <laughs> yeah. Oh, I still you know what? You mean pine saw? No, no, no. I love pine saw. I love pine saw to this day. I do. But man, the Ajax. Oh, and Ajax. So I was a comic guy, not an Ajax. My mom and if I and my mom if I would go to the store and get Ajax instead of coming. Oh no! See, at the corner store, they always had Ajax and um, Comet, and they had the tall can and the little can. And my mom, when I was walking, five years old, my mama got me walking down 63rd Street to go pick up. And if I came back with the wrong can, I'd be in trouble. But hey, y'all, it's the Talk of Chicago 1690. I don't know how we got to all of those squirrels in just one segment, mm -hmm. but let's get the soul plane up to 50,000 feet, and then we'll be back. It just ain't clean if it don't smell like bleach. Now I'ma tell you, I love me some pine saw. I love. I used to hate it when I was a kid, but now, ooh, like the one. I love walking up the steps, and it smell like pine saw. I'd be like, ooh, that smells so good. <sighs> okay. Look at y'all. Look at our cameras. I kind of sort of dope now. Like we got everybody even. Steven, I didn't even make Todd small today, see? <laughs> I'm a giant. You can never make Don't me go small. that far. Don't go that far. <laughs> <laughs> I got my all-star game passes as a media person, but I need some tickets. I need some all-star game tickets, y'all. Oh, Constance, that bottle is nasty. Oh, 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 oh. Okay, I'm going to give y'all Sonya and Todd now. Take Maze out of that. Put Sonya there. Give him. Boom. Todd, talk to the people since she was late. You missed something. Yeah. And you're, and you're looking like a, what you call them people, all you need is a beard, a hipster. With your hipster flannel on. It's cold. You know, it's not as bad because it wasn't quite as windy. It's hip to be square. Hip to be square. I'm trying to learn this new computer. I mean, it's an old computer, but it's still new to me. It's new to me. This isn't easy. I'm learning new skills. I'm learning uh, hard skills. Well, so, Todd, what do you do after you get off work? Uh, Go to sleep? What do you do to um, fill your time? Usually... Drive I, the kids? First, I talk to Titus and, and Faith, but Faith's not here anymore. She's gone? Uh-huh. She doesn't work here anymore? Uh-uh. Why? What happened? I think she got a different job. That's all. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah. You know how, how the producers... Mm -hmm. They uh, one day they email you and say I'm not gonna be home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> I'm never coming back. That's right. <laughs> Maybe this is me. I'm calling you, and I'm here to tell you I'm never coming home. Right. So uh, right now, Marsha was filling in. She wasn't here yesterday, though, I don't think. Of course. That's so funny. Todd knows everybody's name. I don't know nobody but the morning show. <laughs> I'll be like, who? Hi. I'll be talking to people every day. I say hello. Then I don't know. I don't know everybody. It's the administration, there's just too many women over there. I, I can't remember everybody's name. A lot of them begin with S, though. That's what I remember. Uh, then I, um, you're right. I'll go home, check on Hans, take a nap. Sometimes I go to a beat meeting or something. How long is your nap? Uh, like an hour and a half. Okay. Yeah. You're right. And then the, the, I, I get up, I go pick up Claire. And then depending on what's going on, I may go back out and, and do some 21st Ward stuff. Is that a full, how many hours a, month, a week? No, it's not a full time. It's just, uh, you know, I might do like three, four hours a, a week or something like that. Just, uh, I hope your time sheets reflect that. Reaching out to people. I hope you do more than three to four hours a week. <laughs> <laughs> No, I <laughs> do three to four hours a week. Uh, 
too small for prison. To be real. Your love's for real now. No, it's your love, it's my love. My love is your love. My love is here to stay. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co host, Todd Stroger. Oh, wait. My co host, Sonia Escobar. Hey, Sonia, how you feeling this morning? All right, all right, all right. Hey, you know what, Sonia? Did you hear that? Uh, did you hear the big news that President Donald J. Donald John Trump has been acquitted? It is therefore ordered and adjudged that the said Donald John Trump be, and he is hereby acquitted of the charges in said articles. Ain't nothing gonna happen. Uh, <laughs> <laughs> Told y'all. Told y'all. No, no, no. He wasn't impeached. The articles of impeachment were sent. That's a uh, that's we'll put him in the history books. Just like he'll be right next to Bill Clinton. True. Okay. That's just wanted to make sure. I just wanted to make sure because yeah. this is. A, but I don't know. That's it. Right. I, I, I don't know. <laughs> you know, first you laugh. I love it. Lying about an affair. I love Jesus. it. Jesus. I, I think if I rounded up everybody in this building who who had an affair. And he wasn't telling the truth about it, man. That'd be one crowded room. They wouldn't fit in this room, I'm pretty sure. So they'd all be impeached. Yeah. And they'd all be the same as Donald. But if I rounded up all the people who they tried, say if I rounded up all the people who tried to get a world leader to do their bidding for their own personal gain, man, that'd be a pretty sparse room. What do you think? Yeah, because it's only a few world leaders. Yeah. Right. <laughs> I mean, it's like a lot of people in this building. I in this building, there's not one world leader. Russia, but I'm thinking about America. I'm thinking there's no world leaders in this building. I'm thinking about America. There's no world leaders in I Chicago. I have my flag on. There's no world leaders in Chicago. So, I mean, the, the, you can do it in see. I can do it in the United States. It's Bingo. only him. Oh. Well, no. See, there's still a few people alive. Yeah, you know Who what? else alive? Guess Bush? what? Guess what? See this. This it's is this though. wishful. It's this wishful thinking. This is why he's gonna win. It's just, I don't understand. He's gonna win. All right. <clears throat> Did you see? Oh, hey, it's, it's gonna win because sometimes the bad people win too. Oh, what's that? Hey, Sonia. <laughs> Hey, okay, so Sonia, did you see uh, Jay-Z and Beyonce sat down during the, um, did you see they were sitting during the uh, national anthem, but they said they weren't necessarily protesting. Um, it's like, did you notice there was so many flag, oh, you, I don't know, did you watch the Super Bowl? I did, parts of it. Okay, so all pre-Super Bowl was like super patriotic and police officers and how much we love our coppers and um, all that stuff. And I know it had to be kind of a weird situation like with Jay-Z because, you know, he had just gotten $100 million for criminal justice reform. He does have some anti-cop killer commercials on during the Super Bowl, but he sat down. See, it's like, man, he walking a tight line right now. Listen, when you're in the private area, mm -hmm. you're not really watching the game. Yes, yes, you are. Sonia, you are absolutely correct. Until the fourth quarter. I've been in a many a box, and when the, the national anthem goes on, 
I will stop talking to whoever I'm talking to, but that doesn't mean that person stop talking to me. <laughs> <laughs> that, until they notice that I'm I'm turning to the play like, oh oh, I got to do this. That's right, I forgot. I forgot. Are we are we so are we supposed to do? Now are you a sellout if you still salute the flag? He's doing so much great work. I mean, sell out, he's a sell out, sell out, oh, sell out, Negro. I don't care how many hundreds of millions of dollars you got. We'd rather stand outside and talk about you. Anyway, um, did you see? Millions of dollars. Did you see? For what? To, to fight criminal justice, for criminal justice reform, you're going to be paying some bail money. All right? Oh, that was that? We're going to do a bunch of stuff. Probably run those vignettes. I'm sure he's going to figure out a way to make at least 10 million off that, though. I would. You mean, you mean for himself? He's, man, dang. It's a business, man. You ain't too far gone to see that. Yeah, I told you criminal justice reform is a business. It's a business, <laughs> man. Uh, did you see um, Romney making his pitch? So the two people now that we know are rooting for Donald Trump to win today or win the next presidency are Mitt Romney and J.B. Pritzker. Both of them. Yesterday, Mitt Romney was the only Republican to vote um, against let me, let, me, let me make sure I'm clear that I'm not saying JB is going to vote for, because um, JB is on this side right now. You saw, did y'all see Beyond the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District? I jumped around. Hold on. So, let me go back and say that Mitt Romney yesterday voted guilty as the only Republican, but I thought he was preparing his commercials for when he runs for president again. Ah. Right? I was the only one to stand up, not now, and not in four years, because Trump going to win again. But then after that, when he runs, he can and when America tries to return to normalcy, he'll be able to say, I think his problem is America might go too far. By, he might be too unextreme to be elected. Mitt Romney might wind up being a Democrat. Right? Like, if you think about the way things are going. Um, Willie Wilson, did y'all see Willie Wilson got a whole full page ad in the Sun Times today? Whole full page, like a whole full page, but he used every line on it for words. Now I'm just gonna tell you, I read the newspaper every day, but I don't. I if I see a whole page, one story, whole page, I'm not reading. Yeah, uh -huh. like they they gotta break it up. It's the whole page. <laughs> I mean, like in, in typewriter. I mean, in newsprint. Yeah, that's a lot. Man. That's a lot. That's all. So let me ask you a question: Is Willie Wilson now the face of the reparations movement in Chicago? I, I, I mean, his commercials seem to appear that way. So does the open letter and everything. Just curious. A uh, royal police not guilty. How about a shout out to Chance the Rapper, man. Chance inviting South Shore Drill to Chicago finna be all up in the All-Star Game. Speaking of that, somebody who ever got a box of sweet, I'm looking for some tickets, man. What's up? Holla at your boy. Um, cannabis delivery service. Did you see that cannabis delivery service on the website? And you can use a credit card? No, my I didn't see that. Uh, my cousin said, stay away from that. Oh, okay. My cousin said, you use a credit card. They got all your info. Oh, and when no, the yeah. feds come in, they're going to be like, and you know you can't put that money in the bank. So you know they probably got some clever thing where they buy the weed and then you're just paying for the delivery because it's free. The weed is free, but the delivery. But I'm telling you, it's a racket. I'm mm -hmm. kidding. Uh, they tell me that uh, Lori Lightfoot is on TIFF reforms, but it's light. As well as watch Robin Kelly. Y'all know this Robin Kelly and, and Lori Lightfoot been hanging out a lot. She's the first person. I got a sneaky suspicion that Lori Lightfoot is going to try to push Robin Kelly to run against Tony Preckwinkle in the future. But that's just me and a crystal ball. Hey, it's Tough Chicago 1690. I, I'm, I'm clear. I'm clear. You know what? Uh, it's Tough Chicago. We'll be back after traffic, news, and the weather. Live from the WBN newsroom. I'll put that newsroom. together real quick for you. <laughs> See how I put that real together real quick for you. That'd be something. Todd, you're on the camera, man. Let's change the camera view. Let's go to. Oh man, this is hard. Mm-hmm. Your love is my love, my love is your love. I don't really want to get rid of this, but I don't think this is going to do me well. <laughs> it's not, Todd. I can tell you I'm about to buy a new one. Todd, can I tell you something? Yes, you may. You do realize 
that buying a computer these days. I just want you to know, you can go to the store and for like, five, if you're not gonna get a Mac, you can get a computer for $500 that could do probably everything that one can do, plus work. <laughs> plus work. <laughs> uh, yeah, we may have to go that route. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just serious. All right, Todd, so now, Talk to the people, man. Use that camera. I'm hey, trying to people. practice my angles. We're doing angles, which is, you know, everything everything in the world has some kind of math, uh, is a math problem. I tell my children all the time, hey, the whole world is math. If you can figure out math, you can figure out how to make it and make it well. Even just logic. Logic is math. I took a math class. I mean, I took a logic class, and it, it, it gave me some math credits. That's how I got my math minor. That's uh, that Robin Kelly thing. You said Robin Kelly, right? Hmm. You said Robin Kelly? Mm-hmm. Uh-huh. That's interesting. <laughs> I'm pretty clever with that stuff, man. Hmm. I could, I could see the future, and it will be. See? I think the important thing that you said, even if Robin Kelly or whatever, insert name here, is that you think, and I'm not, I'm not going to dispute you in any way, that the mayor will run a candidate or support, even if it's uh, clandestinely, a candidate against uh, Tony Preckley. Tony Preckley was supporting every action against her. She was the teacher. She was the, you know what I'm saying, like. Yeah, I, I I think that there's a war going on outside. No man is safe. Mom, from. what are you doing? You can run, but you can't hide forever from the streets that we done took. You walking with walk around with your head scared to look. You shook, cause ain't no such things as halfway crooks. I don't know what that means, but I agree. Yeah, that's what I Todd, you don't know. What's wrong with Todd's laptop? It's old as hell. <laughs> it's like they don't even make those anymore. I don't even think IBM makes computers anymore. <laughs> yeah, it is old as hell because it's got to be about. Huh? It is old. It's got to be about six years, which is old for a computer. Not Man, old. these days, six years is old. I wouldn't care if I could get it to do what I want. But if I bought a computer six years ago, I wouldn't have bought this. I don't, I don't think I even like it. How do I get to where I want to go? That's always the question, though. How do you get where you want to go? Well, that's what I want to do. can feel your hand moving up my thigh moving around my waist moving side face I can feel your lips I don't want to stop just because people watching by are watching us 
I don't give a damn what they think. I want you now. I don't want to stop just because I feel so good inside of my love. I don't going to stop. No, no, no. I want you. All I want to say is anytime. In any place, I don't care who's around. Mm -hmm. Any time, in any place, I don't care who's around. No, 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 boy. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Sonia Escobar. Sonia, how you feeling this morning? Ooh, Janet. I <laughs> yeah, man. Yeah, yeah. That Janet. That Janet is something else, boy. She really used to... You know, I was just thinking about um, Shakira and J-Lo popping their crotches on TV. And poor Janet was like, now, nah, 10 years ago, what I did was tame. And I'm still, I'm still trying to recover. Justin Timberlake done been on world tour. He done been back to the Please, Super Bowl. That was that tame. See how Ty do? But she did get blacklisted. She did get blacklisted. I believe it's Viacom who owns it. Yep. So every like stage show. She got kicked off of MTV. I mean, come on, man. Come on, man. Meanwhile, they be sleeping in the beds. <laughs> uh, yes, no worry, co-host. You take care of yourself. It's all good. All right, so it's the WVOM Morning Show. Sonia, it's time for the social media question of the day. Um, you know, Ty, uh, Sonia, <laughs> did you watch the State yes, of the Mr. Union? <laughs> You're a race doctor. Sonya, did you watch the State of the Union address? I had to watch my dad. <laughs> there you go. <laughs> oh, my I goodness. <laughs> right. So, well, I was watching the State of the Union address, and one of the things about the State of the Union address that really stood out to me, Sonya, was the fact that <laughs> the lack of civility. Right? Just a straight up lack of civility. It felt crazy to me that Donald John Trump would not shake the hand of Nancy Pelosi. Even though <coughs> even though if she did all the stuff she did to me, I probably wouldn't have shook her hand either. <laughs> no, I mean, I'm just saying. I'm just saying. Like, think about walking into the room and you sitting there and the person who just just MF'd you, just impeached you, right? Just got on TV, called you, talked about you, like everything, called you everything except the child of God. That's a Pat Quinn line, right? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Right. No, I, I had to save it. He made it a hot line, I made it a hot song. Anyway, Nancy Pelosi, so he doesn't shake Nancy Pelosi's hands. That's where it starts. He talked about Nancy Pelosi pretty bad, too. I mean, I would, too, man. She, she, man, have you? You the, know he, he is always the guy who, who sits, shoots the first shot across the bow. Excuse me, Todd. Oh, well, he's the boss. Yep. As the president, you never let your people. Uh oh, see, see now she th see Sonia, see Sonia, is is moving towards the dictatorness, yeah. right? Because <laughs> she that wasn't co-equal branches of government. She like. The president is the boss. But that's a whole nother story. Right. See, but you heard that right there, Todd? See, I, you see, I heard it. You see it? You saw that, right? I'm not tripping and I'm not mad. I'm sending her back to sit. <laughs> but you heard that, right? All right. Now, then we heard the Parkland dad outburst. Right? Now, it, it he didn't go as far as the guy and say, you lie, like they did Obama. Yeah. That was, I was like, damn. That was outrageous. Then... To cap it off, Nancy Pelosi shredded the speech on camera. And she made four or five different piles 
just so in case you didn't get a good camera shot. That's really funny. <laughs> you can get it. No, I mean, did you see her at the end? She was stacking them. Let me make this pile. This pile. She was like, oop, maybe not. They might not catch me. So she was like, Whoosh. didn't get that one. Here's another one. Whoosh. Yep. Got it. But it got me to ask him. But that, that, that didn't bother me because I'm like, well, you know what? If he had to shake, if he didn't shake my hand when he walked by, I'd be like, you F. So, so the funny thing is, so that's my point. So you're saying that, so the lack of civility. So it is it don't do unto others. We are now at a point where everybody agrees. That we don't have to be civil in public. See, here's the no, thing. No, I disagree because I don't think what she did wasn't civil. Uh, for one thing, the speech was over. The cameras decided they wanted to keep on her. Mm -hmm. Okay. She could right. She could have put that. In. I mean, how many times have we seen? See, and this is this the this is that this is how people get in trouble. This is how Democrats gonna get in trouble because they be trying to put like they don't see the ignorance in their ways. They only see the ignorance in others. Now I'm just saying like this. You could take that one or two ways. To me, who's on the fence, I thought that was classless of the Speaker of the House. I didn't think it took class. I already expect Donald Trump to go, and I feel like Donald Trump has dragged everybody right on down to his level. No, no, no. There's a, there's a difference. There's a, a true difference. Uh, and I understand the wallowing in the mud. But, yeah, I don't think she wallowed in the mud. Wallowing in the mud would have been like her... Slapping in the in the back of the head at the end of the speech. That that. Okay, we not not that. Okay, now and at that point, then the Secret Service shoots her because she assaulted the president. <laughs> stop it! Stop! It. Stop, it. Todd! <laughs> stop, Todd! Slap it! So now, so now the so now the bar of disrespect of civility is whether you get physically assaulted. You know, uh, or maybe you don't, that there have been some strange things that have happened in the Capitol before. It, it, it yeah, be there have like been some assassinations. <laughs> No, I just think among members and such. You know? Right, I mean, like, if you in, like, Ukraine, man, they be brawling. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> you ever see those videos? They be jumping over the desk. The <laughs> <laughs> so, let me ask a question. How civil do you have to be in public? I was thinking about this, Todd, because I watch how, like, um, I was thinking about civility. So, there were three things I saw. Like, so, I saw the... Um, when I saw the Trump, no, the Trump, Trump, no handshake to Pelosi, I thought he was playing to his audience and his base. And I thought there was people like, yeah. Is he always doing yeah, that? Right, right, right. That's, that's why he got a, a hard 40%. Yeah. I think Pelosi was playing to her base, but I also think that she could have lost points with independents, right? Cause I think an independent person is like, we already know that dude is crazy. Oh, you, you, you. That's that you. You going down the path? Yeah, I don't. I don't get it. Cause that's her ripping up the speech. Doesn't mean that the speech was over. She read it. It's T over. Todd, it's on every news cycle. It's like you're saying. So, so I'm saying. You know what that is? What? That's the that's the news making news. Okay. Well, it worked. Cause we're talking about it. And people are talking no, about. No, you're it. talking about it. No, I'm it's not talking about it because you are. Right. I would have thought about it twice. Uh huh. You right? Cause. You don't want to, because you're already locked in. You've already made your decision. Your decision is, well, that, and we're going to talk about this a little bit later because there's a whole different part of this that I think that nobody's paying attention to. But I think, and Todd is to me part of the reason that Trump is, Todd's mentality is part of the reason that I'm pretty confident that, not confident, but pretty confident in my prediction that Trump will win because. I believe that the hardcore Democrats have such blinders on, like such, they are so enraged. It's like, I've used this strategy before too, which is to make people so mad at me and hate me so much that they can't focus on strategy. They can't see. And so all the time, they're like, I hate Mace, and he's the worst, and blah, 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 blah. We'd be like, run, run the ball to the left, candidate. No, I'm, I'm just the opposite. I realize what he is. I put him in his spot, and then I say, "Keep an eye on him. He is dangerous." And I'm saying, I say it all the time. This is dangerous. This is dangerous for for you, me, and the rest of the country, but mostly for us darker people. And I'm saying that that sounds very oddly like every presidential campaign that I've heard about since Ronald Reagan when I was a kid. Every single presidential campaign has been told to black people that if this guy gets elected, now, and I'm saying to you, 
And this is all I'm saying. And it's not, I want to move away from and, this. And, and you tell me when they weren't, when it wasn't true, that black people always did worse. White people always did better. But black people, um, but, even if they didn't do worse, they never moved up. So then the lowest record unemployment for black people, because we can't see none of the good stuff that's happening yes, in Illinois. Man. Yeah, man, that McDonald's and that Uber that you're doing at the same time to I make mean, sure that, you, that you've got money but no health insurance is great for you. And you know, I'm going to tell you just like this. It's the, that's the millennial way. That's the millennial way. That's hey, the it's the top of the desk. That's the to what they have to do. No. I, if you, even when Obama was yeah, there. Everybody the young, chooses not to have health care. The young invincibles chose not to have health care. Even President Obama knew that. Even when you went through, I could show it to you in the marketing strategy. Like, people don't, that, you know what, but this is my point, because I think we went, I will come back to this. My point is about civility, right? And even though we disagree, we were able to do it civilly, right? I don't know, I said some really bad things about you, but. You just, you were, uh, right. Cause you know, cause you know, I come over this table, and the next thing you know, it'll be what you think Otis will be. He wouldn't come over this table. He'd have to knock over his two cameras. He ain't never doing that. It's time she got no sixteen ninety. We'll be back. More of the morning show with Bay Jackson coming up. I'm just telling you. So we're gonna talk about this later. But I had a great conversation last night with one of my um, political friends that is not jaded. He's a Democrat, hardcore, but just like, man, we're going to lose our shit once again with all these freaking socialists. First of all, I think that um, Donald Trump is doing the same thing to the Democrats, that he to blacks, that he did to the Republican Party, right? Screw it. Okay, so <laughs> so well, I'll let you start there. But... Remember how the Republicans used to be all rich and college educated and money? No, they weren't. Okay. So that is the most interesting thing about the Republican Party. No, no, no. The face of the Republican Party, right? Oh, I face, would say. Yeah. So the Mitt Romneys, the wealthy, and I feel like the Republican Party face and premise was the rich, wealthy, and all of the other people that followed them, the poor people that did, were aspirational, saying, in there, it's like looking in the mirror, and you really are poor as poor as hell. But you see yourself. That's me and him is the same. It's like the sort of like how the thing with the white folks tricking all the white folks to think that no, they were, the lowest white person was better than the, the yeah, white right. person, right? That kind of has flipped, right? So the Republican uh, pitchfork, not pitchfork, but the white collar Reagan Democrat Republicans have. Or have migrated over there. I would argue with you that the Democrat, the blacks that represent blacks in the Democratic Party, are not representative of the average black person that they represent. They because they have become inundated with the party. I think when you look at who Trump is going after with and even when y'all are saying like even when you hear people say that Centoya Brown should have shouldn't have gotten out of jail or she shouldn't she shouldn't do a commercial right or whatever that like in in and people are saying this stuff and I say and people are saying this stuff and they sound almost crazy to a person who's experienced this stuff like if you've never been locked up and you you can sit here and say, I wouldn't have went I would have sat my ass in jail before I would have cut a commercial for Donald Trump, you sound like a complete idiot to a person who has been in jail and wants to get out. Even if it's only for a week. You mean the point zero one percent of the population? Most people haven't been in jail. They're not gonna be on that side. Todd, if they say that 25% of black males have had some interaction with the criminal justice system, right? Yeah, but that doesn't mean you've actually been in jail. That's Todd, but if you've been locked up, if you've been arrested, it's, I, I, I just think that even as I listen, I, I think about not you, but think about all of those brothers that we talk about that are relying on social services that are part of, they've been interacted with with the criminal justice system. If it wasn't the case, then why the hell are we having this big-ass criminal justice reform fight? 
if we, what was the fucking war on drugs? So now, all I'm saying is, all of those war on drugs people that are now, that we're touting or that we, that all of the media has talked about, that everything black has went around. The only person that's letting people out is him. And people see it. Now, you are inundated with the party. But no, the poor... I don't care about the party. You think, am I making money from the party? No, but you, you, you are, you still are, you don't believe it, but you still, you, you like, you rebel, and then you go right, like, right back to the crib. Well, you know what, you know what I realized? What? Is that all you Negroes who are talking about, let's destroy, 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 ain't got n nothing to build. You can't go to the Republicans, they don't care, That's care about That's Todd, I'm trying to build my own joint, and guess what? I know you are. I'm straight. Like, I'm straight. Yeah. Democrat or Republican, they tr the Democrats tried yeah, to hurt me. But, the Democrats tried but to take the other me. Side, who, I didn't need, and I didn't get nothing from the other side. Guess what? Try, and they, guess what? They, I rebuilt without all of them. They the think it's destroying something and building something at the same time. Hold on, let's talk about it. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mage Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Stroger. Ty, uh, wait, hold on. Uh -huh. I got my co-host, Sonya Escobar. Sonya, how you feeling today? Too late, you can't take it back. Excuse me, Ty, can I have some civility, please? Yes, thank you. <laughs> <laughs> this is the WVON Morning Show, and we are asking, how civil do you have to be in public? You know, Ty and I have been having another argument that we're going to save for 8 o'clock about this whole thing, because I think that there is a... I think that Donald Trump is being very strategic in how he's targeting black people. I know people don't want to. I mean, I, I understand that in your mind that it's hard to believe that. But I'm a, we're going to talk about it. And even after we talk, I just want you to look. I just want you to look. Okay. Okay? All right, y'all. But how civil do you have to be in public? I was thinking about, like, Todd, there are people who are willing to. Um, I, was, I always talk about socially awkward situations. Like I wouldn't, I might heckle someone at a sporting event, but I would not heckle someone while they're talking, right? Like if they're at a public event, I wouldn't do it. Like I wouldn't be, I do, I wouldn't talk to it, right? But I wonder, what are the rules of civility? Is are there are there rules of civility? Some people don't think there are. Like, I, mean, I think we've seen them. I think we know them. On TV. I think we've seen them. <laughs> oh, right. We do. I think we know them in oh, person. You're right. But we I think I think that people who lack civility like that, like that yell and scream and stuff, that's because they have no strategy and no desired outcome. They just want to embarrass somebody. Or they want to try and just prove their loudness. But I like and then like the no handshake. I'm okay with no handshake. I think you can not handshake somebody. Like I, I don't think you That happened to me. Literally. Really? Somebody not hood you handshake you? So, um, there's a, uh, uh, one of those ready preparedness type test things out in the suburbs. Okay. And the county is, you know, hosting it. It's way out in the suburbs. I don't even know, I can't remember which one it was, but it's like northwest is something. So, I go to a funeral, and I, uh, so I get there a little late, uh, things are going on, uh, some white kid. I, I always call anybody who's like 32 and under. <laughs> some white, white kid. kid. Yeah. Thinks he's smart and says, oh, traffic was bad. And, you know, uh, but I'm civil. So I don't say, nah, it really wasn't traffic. It was that 52-year-old that, uh, woman who died of cancer whose funeral I decided to go to. But that should have said to make him feel like crap. But I didn't. See? Because you're trying to be civil. So I was trying to be civil. So I'm walking and, and there's some police officers and I'm shaking all the police officers' hands and, you know, thank you and all that kind of stuff. I get to one guy and he says, I'm not shaking your hand. I don't like what you do. <laughs> white cop, I bet. Hello? Yes. Very. So how'd you cop. respond? That's an awkward moment. That is an awkward moment. <laughs> that is an awkward moment. I, I, That's I, a conundrum. I think I said, well, you probably actually don't know what I do, but okay. Now I move on. All right. Uh, I would the, like the mayor of the city, you know, calls me and apologizes. But I would have yeah. cut their whole funding. I would, if I had any state, I would have been like, let me tell you what I would have done. I'd have been like, why don't you have him call me yourself? You know how? Remember how the uh, white commissioner did? I want you to. Oh no, how a uh, royal did? He said, I want you to come down here oh. and apologize to my man. But, yeah. Right. See how they didn't even think about that. All right, y'all. What is? How civil do you have to be in public? Let's start with Michael O'Connor. Mike, you're on Talk Chicago. Hi, good morning. Good morning, good morning Mike. Mike. Um, you know what? My daddy taught me that she's supposed to be civil in public at all times. 
And I know that's a set rule. However, there are times at the moment when you your your consciousness fails. Your ability to love others as you love yourself fails. And 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 what I believe after hearing that speech, after seeing it, and after being a senior, living in a senior building where I know that seniors are suffering because of his public policy, specifically as it concerns uh, for for drugs and the formulary list and what people got to go through in order to make sure that they get their medicine, that they were getting it before, and now all of a sudden it's being cut off. You got VON listeners, man, who are now dealing with this, who, if they saw Trump somewhere in public, they would not be civil <laughs> because of what they're going through. So, I'm not, you know, I do understand, though, that your point that Trump was playing to uh, first to African Americans in his speech. I understand that. And I believe that they're counting on the fact that most Americans did not watch the speech and that they're dealing with clips of the speech. So it's more salacious to show Nancy and uh, Nancy Pelosi and the president, you know, being blatantly ignorant, dealing with Trump's behavior that you would teach your kids not to do. But that's more of a point than to deal with their platforms, the Democratic platform, as well as the Republican platform, and deal with, it, it, it takes more time to do that in terms of being able to make sure you get out here and do what you're supposed to do. So I would tell everybody in our listening voice, because we, because you're heard all over the world, that wow. individuals who are Americans need to get out here, on, need right. to understand their candidate's platform, not just the top of the ticket, but the bottom of the ticket, and make your choice. But do make a choice. Um, and as far as I'm concerned, Trump can, if he died tomorrow, I would bless him on his transition. And that's my point. That's my comment. Y'all have a good day. Thanks, good Mike. Byron, you under that? You had the last call. Hey, good morning, Maze from Rio de Janeiro, man. What's <laughs> what up, Byron? Go ahead. You know, Give time some business. I'm here to relax. I have to come here to relax. I have to listen to your show day in and day out. Especially that Todd. You asked Todd two days ago, what have the Democrats done for us since, since Obama? And he couldn't answer anything. And you enumerate what, you enumerate what Trump was, has done for black folks with all that money goes to those black, you know, black, black, black colleges. And he hasn't brought up one point that, that the Democrats have given us. You keep asking that same question, but he can't, he can't answer it. Can he answer it today? Come on, Todd. What have the Democrats done? Answer for Byron. You really, you realize that the numbers are pretty much the same as when Obama. Everything was was trending this way. So it's not like uh, Trump has done something great. And to be honest with you, this whole letting people out of of jail. You think that all black people are going to hop up and say, "Woo, this is great"? No, you got it. You got it wrong. That's funny. And and at the same point, once again, Byron. He never answered the questions about what Democrats did. Because it's the Chicago 1690. <laughs> we'll be back after traffic and the weather. I'll tell you something they did. They raised the black flag over the state of Illinois Capitol. It's the Talk of Chicago 1690. We starting to trend, y'all. The Talk of Chicago and the Vote. You God, see it? You're right. That, that, I, I'm, I'm with you. That is directly responsible. You are directly responsible. You and your, your lovely wife. Now we got to get the county. In the city. Oh, they'll all do it now. Huh? They'll all do it. You know, nobody wants to be left out. You think? Yeah, nobody wants to be left Lori out. Lori Life was going to probably put up a rainbow flag and add a black stripe. Just ain't 1980. <laughs> <laughs> they'll be like, I ain't put nothing up. Too much. And I'm starting to sweat. You can't move too much in this studio, bro.
Todd, you're on the people's camera. Mm -hmm. They're looking for you. They said, what is that damn Todd doing this to her? <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> well, it's been a long time. I shouldn't have left you. But I was going around my step too. Think of how many shows you slept through. That's not it. That's not how it goes. That is how it goes. No, you tell me. You tell me. You're so smart. You're so smart. Come on. That's what you got? That ain't how it goes. That's exactly how it goes. Words, what is it, like three words? Three or four words, though. Uh, listen to him. He think he's so smart. He think he's so smart. Where's Facebook? Oh, uh, 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 uh. Let me get back to Facebook. How do I get back to Facebook? See, his computer don't even have bookmarks. <laughs> <laughs> his, your computer's so old it don't even have the internet. <laughs> it probably has bookmarks. I just haven't figured it out yet. I'm still learning. I'm learning. So what y'all think, day. man? I think it's pretty. Every day. Don't let him fool you. What no? What up, y'all? How y'all feeling this morning? Give us a call. All right, we can ready to have some more talks. Um, we need more flag. We can ready to talk about the black flag raising the Illinois raising the black flag. Now, the thing I want to point out to the people is that. When we work with our people, instead of kick them in the ass and you nudge them along, and then when they don't listen, then that's when we act up. But that black flag flying over the state capitol, that's that's a big one, y'all. That's not as big as it being over Water Wreck, because Water Wreck opened the door. But y'all got to go take care of the pictures. You got to share the pictures. You got to make people know that that stuff counts. And now, I'm saying, let's make them know. Now, let's turn the city. Let's make the city do what they got to do. Yes? Join the club. What up, Rhonda Spry Payne? What up, Greg Granite? What up, Alonzo Johnson? What up, Lunier Marsh? What up, uh, C. Andrea Earls? Lloyd better put something up. What up, Dennis Kaiser? Because y'all going to call today. What up, Michelle Harris? What up, Mario? Dang, Mario, where you been at, dog? Uh, what up, Angela Kilpatrick? My fellow Aquarian birthday. What up, Constance Foster? Beulah, I forgot. Am I still mad at you or not? You still, <laughs> I, I can't remember if I... You know how you be mad at somebody and then you forget if you mad with them or something? Uh, what up, Alvin E. Norton? What up, Dennis Kaiser? What up, Marvin Bell? What up, Carol Zwyzek? What up, Milton Ingram? What up, Constance? Um, What up, Brandy? Brandy Love. John Rembert. Verdella. Where is Leah Charrier? Tiger Lily, Brother Pata. 
Wilson Coleman. Live from the Xfinity Studios at WVON. You're listening to The Morning Show with Mays Jackson on the Talk of Chicago, 1690 WVON. With y'all men. I want a gentleman with you. With gentleman. Hope the last gentleman too. Mm 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 mm. With gentlemen, gentlemen now to bring up the past. With gentlemen, and I hope you like gentlemen at last. Also. More than gold. We're charming. Charming. on foot from the. Yeah. Holy Mount Zion. Holy Mount Zion. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 16, 9 a.m. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Torch Stroger. Oh, wait. I got my co-host, Sonya Escobar. But you know, Sonya, how we do at the top of the hour. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom? As well as uh, Todd Stroger. He is bringing up the rear end, the baggage claim. Got to say what's up to my co-host, Miss Sonya Escobar. Sonya, you good? All right, let's take this thing on. All right, all right, all right. Hey, Sonia, when you were uh, flying the soul plane, looking down over the state capitol. So, you know, we took the soul plane. We took off from O'Hare, and as we banked, banked left, banked east, we looked down at the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. And as we looked down, we saw throngs of black people underneath right off of Michigan Avenue raising the flag of blackness on a state building not a state building a county building actually the the largest land owner in the state of Illinois quite frankly Todd it is they actually hung the red black and green flag and I'm gonna tell you people Think about this three weeks ago when we talked about it and nobody believed. Think about three weeks ago when we talked about it and nobody believed. But can I tell y'all something? Because people be thinking these things take a little while. Do you know that they that 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 the black commissioners at MWRD have been working on that for a year? A whole year. When you want to do something right, you start early and work hard. Climb the ladder, climb the mountain, and did the work. And think about it. It was one of those things that people worked and toiled in silence. All the time, people were throwing stones, saying, you ain't this, you ain't that, you ain't this. We had people coming around, talking about, how, right? And, and, and there went the red, black, and green flag on the building. Todd? And then yesterday as I was sitting in my big chair, actually it's like a big, my couch has a big chair in it. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Like, it's like a couch in it. You know I got to get rid of that couch though. Well, why is that? That couch has really done terrible things for my love life. You know why? It's too big? It's one of those big old couches, you know, where it's got the little box, the, the thing where you can store your remote controls. and It's like it's sectioned. So I can't get close, right, to my... You know, we watching TV. It's like a barrier. Then I can't get fresh. I think that is very smart of you <laughs> to think of that. I got to get rid of that couch, though. And so I got to get rid of that couch. Cause I was thinking, like, dang. I used to get a lot more action before that couch. <laughs> Let me stop. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, I'm being so much trouble. I'm sorry, y'all. 
Okay, but anyway, Todd, I was sitting on my couch yesterday watching TV when I got an alert. And I got an alert on Facebook from Kimberly Neely Dubuclay, who had shared. Kimberly Neely Dubuclay was the MWRD commissioner who was here with us the other day. Mm. And she shared a post from the governor's office. Now, you know me, I'm usually like, I was like a president, I was like a president, <laughs> governor's office, like president, president. and you know, I was talking, Sean Rapelier, you better make it happen. Guess what, Todd? What? Yesterday, the governor posted a picture from the Illinois state capitol with the red, it was the United States flag, it was the state of Illinois flag. And then it was the red, black, and green Pan-African flag that flew above the state capitol. And Todd, I must tell you, I must tell you that my heart was a flutter. Not because there was nothing personal about it. What I felt was it was the second step in the first step of a victory. Remember when I said we, if we can figure out a way on some things that we can work on that we don't have to disagree on, just so we can, just so we could be like, like everybody black, unless you're trying to find a reason to have a beef, ain't got no problem, shouldn't have a problem with the red, black, and green flag flying over because what it is is the state of Illinois acknowledging until y'all come up with a new flag and all that stuff because I know it's all these internal, this ain't the right, and this is just a physical. But for black children, black adults, can you imagine if Marcus Garvey was alive right now? Could you imagine if those Black Panthers that you talked about, could you imagine if all of those people could look up and see a red, black, and green? Not that we free, because we ain't free. <laughs> but it, saw, it signals to me a rebirth of blackness in Illinois. I.E. we will be heard. You know, I listened to the mayor. And I heard her clips from her speech at the Equality Illinois Gala. And she talked very forcefully about no longer having to be silent. For not being quiet. For not having to. But you know, and I was thinking, this is an awesome speech for Black History Month. Except it wasn't for Black History Month. Mm. So now, guys, ladies, gentlemen, black Chicago, we got the state, we got the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District. Well, let me back up. We got the Metropolitan Water Reclamation District because they went first. Shout out to Barbara McGowan, uh, President Kerry K. Steele. Shout out to Kimberly Neely Dubuclay and all the commissioners that supported it. And the ones that y'all did, well, let me stop because they all support it. We got... The state of Illinois, shout out to Sean Repelier in the governor's office. Shout out to Secretary of State, Jesse White. Hey, man, y'all know I've been hard on Sean Repelier. I'm, I'm tell y'all. Y'all know I call him out. But you got to call people out when they do good, too. Right. You got to acknowledge that because we got to build rapport. So shout out to Sean. Shout out to, uh, to Cambium Cam Buckner, who, when he heard, sent the first text off. Shout out to State Representative and Leader Jahan Gordon Booth. Shout out to Representative Art Turner for helping make it happen. Shout out to Omar, excuse me, Jahario, Omar Williams for making it happen for us. Right? Now, Todd, we got the state. We got... The count. Now, now, really though, y'all really want to impress us at the state. We want all the buildings, all the build. JB got billions of dollars. He could buy some flags. I'm saying, man, we need to get JB and all. Where are all the black millionaires? Can I? Because none of the black millionaires called me except the Rands. Oh, and 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 Nikki Zala called me too. To say they was gonna buy flags. Shout out to Eddie Reed. Eddie, I call you today. Shout out to Reverend Al Sampson. Reverend Al Sampson is part of this movement too. But we need everybody. So you know what, Todd? I was thinking. Remember when it was the when, remember when it was the cannabis, and black folks decided we was gonna call? Cause I called. Check this out. So you know, do you remember when I saw Alderman Irvin when I dropped you off? 
Yeah. Chairman of the Black Caucus, and I said, Chairman of the Black Caucus, Alderman Jason Irvin, could you please help us get black flags on the state of, in the state of on, on on the city city hall? You know, he kind of told me. He said, "Well, you got to call your mayor." So this is what I want to do. I want to call the mayor. I want to call the mayor's office, and I want to ask. Do can, maybe we could find. You know, uh, let, let's let's figure. Out. So what they tell you to do if you want to, so I got on the internet and I called. You know, maybe we should call three one one because what they say if you want to talk to the mayor, you got to call three one one. But this is what I'm thinking. I'm thinking, could you imagine if the mayor came into the office today and there was calls loaded up from black people saying they wanted the red, black, and green, not the rainbow flag with red, black, and green added. We don't want no patch. We don't want no sticker. We want the red, black, and green flag flown in City Hall. On City Hall. When I walked through City Hall during the LGBT Pride Month, there was flags. That, not a flag. There were flags uh, draping the elevators. Draping the entrance to the city of, I want it all. I'm not against nobody. Have your day. But what I want us to do is I want black folks that are within the range of the WVOM Morning Show. 311. Call Mayor Lightfoot. Call City Hall and tell them, ask Mayor Lightfoot, we, not ask, tell her. We want the black flag hung on city buildings. Can we do that? Am I crazy for asking for us to do that? Am I crazy? Nope. Am I, 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 I mean, think about what it would mean if all through, can you imagine what the white folks are going to be like, what that red, black, and green mean? It's for the blood, right? Could you imagine though? And then let me tell y'all one more thing. I think we should flood city, we should have a city council day, a, a Cook County uh, board meeting day, and an Illinois General Assembly day where we red, black, and green it out. It's Talk Chicago 1690, we'll be back big enough to slice it in lots of other ways. More of the morning show. Nah, brother, brother, put it up. We can't wrap the police cars in red, black, and green. <laughs> we don't want to do that. <laughs> that would be the antithesis of it all. <laughs> Even though, if you would have seen that cop's face and we had red, black, and green and make a white cop drive it in the black neighborhood, that would be hilarious. Zion. Call 311. Call 311. Call 311. Tell the mayor we want the black flag raised in all city buildings. 311. That number is easy enough for Todd to remember. <laughs> I think he's talking about white tie, though. Uh, I use 311 off for a lot. If I run in a pothole or see a sinkhole, I'll pull over, take a picture, and send it to 311. We're all in this together. Take a moment, share the broadcast. Call 311. Call 311. And call 311. Can we call 311 on air? <laughs> I think that would be good. Uh. 
Negro Drive. Well, I felt like Jason should ask as the chairman of the Black Caucus. He should be our representative. But if he said we got to ask the mayor, let's ask the mayor. Yeah, I mean, she controls the building. You are tuned into the Top Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Give me a call, 312 371 8130. 312 371 8330. 374 8130. 312 374 8130. Give us a call. I want to know if we can get everybody to get on the phones. Call 311. Tell them you want the mayor to hang the black flag on all city buildings. Y'all, they had rainbow ca police cars. I never forget. I, don't, I didn't see that. I did. They had it on TV. They showed them doing it the whole, not TV, but they showed the whole process. It was on TV, everything. Why, can we make Chicago not ignore us? Right? Like, I know the, the TV stations got their little promos on. Right? Like, hi, life is good in Chicago, and I'm glad. But can we make people, can, can we have white folks run, walking under our banners and our flags? We got to walk under everything else. I'm saying, could you imagine being on La LaSalle Street? And then what would happen if we could get the business community of Chicago to say, the black folks talked about something. I'm saying, what if we went and made all the Ar Arab stores hang a red, black, and green flag that's sitting up in our joint? Now, if, it, if I had my real way, uh -huh. I would make them donate to the at Free Africa Fund. Freedom, uh, like, I would, if I had my real way, I would be, I would have me a squad. And we would go knock on the Arab corner store doors and we would have them put the sign in the window and then we would also have them contribute to the bail fund for all the people that they don't help set up. Oh, I'm sorry. I know that's too, I'm too. Too much. I, I be doing too much. So instead though, what if I'm saying it's like, you got to have a sign that you want some black people in here, you got to show us some love. Can can we get black people to call 311 See, I, I feel like Lori Lightfoot got the white folks thinking she got the black folks under control. I, really? They be like, y'all got y'all mayor? So let's get our mayor. To, let's, I'm not hating. I'm saying let's have the mayor. I want the mayor to take all the force that she used to come whoop on black people. Talk, all that stand up clap. All that force, all that piece of pie, all that talk about everybody hating and the colorful language and the terrible language and we ain't got to sit there. Choose your words. Choose. That's right. So choose our flag. Y'all give 311 a call unless. Am I crazy? Todd, is that crazy? No, no. You know what Claire said to me? What? She said, uh, where's Gage Park? <laughs> <laughs> And I said, uh, yeah, there's nothing I could really say that would make you visualize Gage Park. And she said, well, we saw this uh, documentary and it talked about uh, the riot in Gage Park and segregation. She was like, and I, I didn't see how it's much different than what it is now. <laughs> <laughs> right, man. I'm telling you, let's. And, and, and um, I'm going to go to Lewis first because I think I got an answer for this question. Lewis, you want to talk Chicago 1690? Good morning, Todd. Good morning, May. Good morning. Good morning. Hey, Todd, uh, Gage Park is different because uh, I grew up in that area of Gage Park when it was uh, 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 segregated. And uh, we had to uh, march up there just to go to school up there and to live in uh, Marquette Park when uh, 
or Martin Luther King came up here, the Reverend Martin Luther King came up here to yes. get us housing. So it has changed, you know, and it, and, and it did change for the best, you know. Right. But about this uh, black flag thing, you know, hey, May, you got to quit calling, calling it the black flag. And, and the reason why I say the black flag is because the black flag represents ISIS. You know, and so if you want uh, people to uh, uh, to rep, you know, to recognize the, uh, the the colors, the red, black, and green, you know, you have to say the red, black, and green. You know, you have to say the Pan American flag, or you have to say the African American flag. Another thing is that we shouldn't have to call three one one because you was talking to the right person when you was talking to Jason Irvin, the leader of the Black Caucus, our Black representative that we have down there in uh, uh, at uh, what is it, City Hall, so-called City Hall, they should be down there representing us. We shouldn't have to push them to do stuff that they already know uh, that uh, should represent our interests, you know, because we uh, put them in those positions to represent our interests. So what we have to do, we have to do like Dr. Uh, Martin Luther King said, we got to vote all those uh, dirty B- uh, uh, you call them uh, Negroes, but I call them black ninjas. We got to vote all those black ninjas out of office down there because they the ones that gave our TIF fund away, and they the ones that are uh, running our city in, in the ground, you know. It's not uh, 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 President Trump. It's uh, the Democrats that we got, uh, that we keep electing every year. I, I agree with you, Lewis. So I, I'm gonna tell you, uh, I'm gonna tell you, I felt some kind of way when Jason told me that, though. I really did. I felt like a constituent who went to get help and and was kind of maybe I caught him at the wrong time, but I said this is what I'm not gonna do. When one door closes, I'm gonna go to another. It but he's, like, he's actually right. Uh, but it, it shouldn't just be you. Uh, it needs to be a, a, a lot of people who call the mayor's office and say, this is what, what we like to see. And I guess my thing is... Because numbers it, are what count. I think numbers count, but I think also if the Black Caucus... Just, see, see, this is... We keep making excuses. We just got... Hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Or hold maybe on. the Black Caucus have a press conference and say, everybody call. Hold on. Oh, okay, but I'm saying like this. I feel you, it's bigger than them. But again, take the lead. That's a simple thing. I said, hey, man... Could you help us? Black flag, I mean, the black, co I mean, the, the African, no, I don't want to call it the African American flag, the red, black, and green flag. And the answer is, well, you got to call your mayor. Okay, so I'm going to call my mayor. But I'm going to tell you just like this there's a legislative body that probably, that 20 votes, 20 people calling would alleviate me having to ask 20,000 people to call. I think what he means is the mayor is going to make that decision. Okay, I got you. And, I, and I'm saying just like this. I'm saying I want my representatives to represent for us. And I'm saying what I the person that has a quicker chance to talk to the mayor is probably the chairman of the Black Caucus. And I'm not tripping on Jason at all. All I'm saying is, hey, y'all, get on the phones, 311. He said we need to call the mayor, so let's call the mayor. 311, right. call the mayor's office and tell her we want the red, black, and green flag hung on city buildings. We And I don't want no less, no less. Oh. The ON Morning Show is proud to present Black, black Facts. Facts. All With right. today's Black Oops. Fact, here's WVON Morning Show host Todd Stroger. All right, Maze. Actually, I've got two, even though you talked during my time, I probably don't have enough time for both. But the Buffalo Soldiers, a name given by Native American plainsmen, were the all black regiments created in the U.S. Army beginning in 1866. These soldiers received second-class treatment and were often given the worst military assignments, but at the lowest des de de desertion rate than their white counterparts. More than 20 Buffalo soldiers received the Medal of Honor for their service. The oldest living Buffalo sur soldier, Sergeant Mark Matthews, died at the age of 111 in 2005 and was buried at Arlington National Cemetery. And that's our fact for today. Thank you, Sonia. We'll be back after traffic news and the weather. In fact, I did. It took a little longer than I thought. Buffalo soldier. Snow is expected to continue through the... Now this brother's going to come back at that wrong. 
Buffalo soldier in the heart of America. Brought to America, fighting on the rival, fighting for survival. You make hmm? yo 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 Oh boy, oh boy, oh boy. But yeah. This is the kind of thing. But you also gotta remember, you know, when you stop people in the street, that's a strange, strange thing. But it's all about it's all about people uh, doing things. There's about ten seconds of the song. In mass as a group. Yeah. Yeah. Because the mayor may not be interested. When we wanted the Speaker Madigan to do something, I don't even remember what it was. You know, people started giving out his fax number because you know fax machines were great in that those days. And people started faxing and calling his office and he noticed. I mean that's 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 just the people making things happen for themselves. Uh, when it's, you know, when it's legislation and it's got to be fought through this and that, uh, that may be a different uh, way that you would have to take it. But when you're trying to get the mayor, the executive, to do one thing that she can do, then, yeah, I mean, you need to, to speak directly to her. Now, maybe it would have been nice. If the, uh, I shouldn't say maybe, it would have been nice if, if uh, the alderman had said, you know what, I'm going to call the other alderman uh, to take a vote, and I'm sure they'll all agree, and we will send out a press release and a letter to the mayor stating that we think this would be a good thing for Black, Black History Month. Todd is trying to show Maze that uh, the Buffalo Soldier's song has the same beat as the Banana Splits. Yeah, 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 yeah. I don't know if that's true or not, but I will say that I have adopted the policy that all the things that we do are built on something else. You know how Maze is always talking about hip hop? Well, hip hop's built on the art before. You're on that camera. Oh, man. See, Maze is always telling me to speak to this camera, so I'm speaking to this camera. And now he says I'm, I'm over here. <laughs> That's why we have camera angles, bro. Angles. Gosh, he's become such a technician now, I don't ever know where the heck I am. We need an intern. We need more than an intern. So they say that the president didn't shake Pence's hand, but I think it, it would have been tougher to shake Pence's hand after he snubbed Pelosi. Oh, he just wouldn't shake. I mean, I'm just saying, dude is. I, I know this girl Candace Clark better have got. I bet she better got paid. She better got paid, 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 mm -hmm. paid, paid. Cause she ain't. Remember that black girl that did the commercial for rum and she got cooked. I know she had to get paid for that. <laughs> A lot. No, yeah, no way. Man, do you know how much I? Mm -hmm. oh, gee, let me stop. Mm. Or maybe he helped her find a good position somewhere. Not with that haircut. Oh, nowadays. The world has changed. I know it has changed so much. They said that the number one thing that, that job yeah, employers are looking for now out of employees is not technical skills, even for technical jobs. The ability to interact with people. 
So a caller just called, and he said he called 311, and they're like, oh, we can't do anything, but you can call this number if you want. What's the number? I'll put Michael back on, he'll tell you. Okay. Michael O'Connor, okay. Okay, because uh, when you go to the city's website, it says call 311, right? You want to reach, say you want to reach the mayor's office. Mm-hmm. Yeah, All they, they got to the say is we want to talk. They got their own number. Okay. So I'll put them through. All right. But put it up. Hey, Mike putting it up. Give me, what? put the number up here, too. Okay. Tanil, they found that person because they got money. When you have money you can, and you're willing to spend it, you can pretty much get anything you want. Now, you might not get the person you want, but you can get the concept that you want. Oh, oh, show and tell. Just the game I play when I want to say I love you. Whoa, show me. Tell me that you feel the same way. That's right, Miss Mayor. That's that's right, Madam Mayor. Show us. Tell us you love us. Hang that red, black, and green flag. Hang that flag. That's right. It's the WVON Morning Show. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host Sonia Escobar, and sitting in with us today is Todd Stroger. Uh, <laughs> you know. Hey, y'all, uh, but show and tell, man. I think the red, black, and green flag is a way to show me and tell me that you love me. Right? See, you got before you can do something, you got to acknowledge we exist. Hey, did you know that Scott is wearing the same suit I was wearing yesterday? It's time to Chicago, 1690 AM. <laughs> he was like, man, that sure is a nice suit. Ah, thank you very much. Hey, it's Talk Chicago 1690. All right, y'all. So I'm asking us to call the mayor's office to call 311 to tell them you want to speak to the mayor's office because you want the red, black, and green flag. Now, hold on. Wait a minute. Michael O'Connor's just... Is this Michael O'Connor? He said he called, y'all. First of all, Mike, thanks for not taking any, wasting any time and getting on the phone. Mike, what happened when you called 311? Because when I went on the website, it said if I wanted to talk to the mayor, go to 311. Well, no, you have to call directly. To see, when you call 311, the operator will tell you they don't handle that. They just told me that. But I do have the number. The number of the mayor's office okay. is 312-744. Uh, people, get a pencil or a pen. I'm going to do it all day. Uh, Keep three, doing it. Just read. <laughs> 312-744-3300. That's 3300. <laughs> yes, that number is 312-744-3300. That's the number. All right, Mike. Y'all I have appreciate a good day. You. That's my comment. Hey, that's Bye. Mike doing his thing for us, Mike O'Connor. Hey, y'all, okay, so, look, we want, we, we want to give the mayor the opportunity to show us and tell us that she really loves us too, us black people in Black History Month. So what did she say? She told us, what she tell us about the pie? She said, it's the pie. You can eat the pie. Even give me some pie. I want some pie. Look, we want our peace. We want our peace. Green, you on the top of Chicago, 1690. How you doing, Maze? And I'm going to try to talk slow so I get all my points. Up. First of all, you inspired me. I had my... Uh, uh, red, black, and green flag for two years, but I got it on. I'm living in the South Burbs, and uh, I put my flag on the front door, and it's beautiful, man, and that's because WVON, you and Todd. But uh, you were also talking about um, uh, black history. My father-in-law sued the state of Mississippi. It was the Higher Education Act. They were uh, sending the money to the white private state school, I mean school and not the black schools. And Jake Ayer, 1975, sued the state of Mississippi, won, and my my wife was going to Alcon, his brother, and he sued, and they won their state suit. A black man suing the state of Mississippi, 1975, won. Fannie Lou Heyman used to come to their house every weekend. 
So uh, I just wanted to put that out there. And because of you, I'm flying that flag, and I'm a pastor of a church, and I'm going to text all my people and tell them to call the mayor, West Side of Chicago Church. That's what I'm talking about, Green. We appreciate you, man. Hey, 312-744-3300. I said earlier it was 311, but it's not. It's 312-744-3300. Because, y'all, the man told us this. When, when the brothers was asking about what about the black cut, when she wanted to make the LGBT cut, this is what she told us. Go ahead. Sir. My friends, the pie is big enough to slice it in lots of other ways. What we are asking for is data, a study, to determine where we are. Well, we know where we are. We right here. We have been where we have been. We right here in the city of Chicago. And black folks, we want that red, black, and green flag raised. Give them a call, 312-744-3300. I want you to call your alderman's office. I want your alderman, go right by your alderman's office and ask what they hang the black, the red, black, and green flag. Can I tell you who the first? Can, can I tell you something? You want to know who the first person to put a red, black, and green sign in their window was? Who? A Latino. Gilbert Villegas. Gilbert Villegas, who listened to the WVON morning show. Man, he sent me a picture while the show was still going. He was like, I'm the first in the city. I was like, no, you know it. <laughs> but, shout out to, man, and, shout, and you know what? I feel like, how many, black, how many wards have black constituents out of the 50 wards? Probably like 48. <laughs> Probably. 48. I don't see why it shouldn't be 48 red, black, and green flags in all the ward offices. 50. In all the townships. I, I, I'm wondering, does Thornton Township have red, black, and green flags flying? Think about all the black suburbs, Southland suburbs with black mayors and managers. With black population. We have moved to the Southland. How many of them have got red, black, and green flags flying? How many thought about it? I'm not tripping on you. I'm saying to those Southland mayors and managers, particularly the black ones, could you imagine if people walked out of their building and came to your city hall and you went and bought a red, black, and green flag and hung it up? Is it? It's only like 60 bucks. 60 bucks! What about our black preachers? I bet you, I bet you Father Flagg already got one. <laughs> I'm pretty sure he got one. <laughs> Father Flagg will probably fly one all year long. Black preachers, why are you up in the politicians' rooms? What about, what, 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 you know? Because you know when you go in the pulpit, it's an armed um, Christian soldier. Well, did I hear the audience? Did I hear the audience playing in the background? What? Skip! Hey, man, get out of here! Hey, 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 hey! I have returned. That's right. It's Minister Mays. And the Lord has laid upon my heart. Taught? Yes, sir. The Lord has laid upon my heart that we should raise the red, black, and green flag throughout the city of Chicago to help people see that beacon in the sky, to know, to know that you are the chosen people right here in the city of Chicago. You see, the, the, the exodus can only be happened if it is ordained by, by, by the Lord. And so as I think of the black exodus, and as you leave the walls of the city of Chicago, and you head to the Southland, to the suburbs, out to Will County. It has been laid upon my heart, Todd. Yeah. That we should plant a flag. A red, black, and green flag. They should be throughout the neighborhoods. You know, there was a time when, my, when, when the Lord told the people to be obedient. If you was obedient to the word, he would bless you real good. Mm. And so I'm saying to all of my pastors, you know I'm recently ordained in the Universal Church of Life. I'm still waiting on my collar. However, Todd, it is now the time for the pastors. To join this movement. So I'm calling out to all the black ministers. I'm calling out to all 
all the politicians. May the Lord lay it on your heart as he has on mine. That you wave that red, black, and green flag to reinstill the pride in our young black children. Mm. And I'm just going to tell you before I get out of here, because that, that rascally Mays Jackson with his sin and self. Rascally. Rascally. No. Manish self. He's so manish. I, I, you know, I tell his mama, <laughs> that boy's manish. You think he's from the South. No, that boy manish. That boy manish. I have told that he, I, I see him crack scratching at the door trying to get it. Now, Todd, a toy, I'll tell you, I locked him in the bathroom. <laughs> but you know he has a nap, bad habit of getting out of here, so I'm going to get on up out of here for his break. But y'all do this real quick for me before I go. Call 312-704-3300 and tell the minister Mays told you that the Lord has laid it on our heart that Larry Lightfoot you too can be redeemed. Come on home. The doors of the black church are open. Come on to the altar. It's the talk of Chicago. 1690. Let me get out of here for that maze. Get back. It's the talk of Chicago. I'm Minister Maze. We out of here. <laughs> More of the morning show with Maze Jackson coming up on the talk of...
of him in grace will be me You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. I'm back. Man, I guess, what is, there's something wrong, Ty, with the lock on the bathroom door. It seems always to take me at least a break to get out. Not, you know, I gotta stop I'm going. I'm gonna go ask you if you go in the bathroom. I was, well, you know, usually if you go into the, like if I'm in the stall, they can't lock me in. But you know, if you go into that other part, that's when you know you'd be distracted when you're in there. Yeah, all right. I'd be so busy. I don't know the, about that, to me uh -huh. distracted in uh -huh. the bathroom. Right, you? Yeah. Oh, yeah, you would. Oh. <laughs> no, I would. Hey, okay, Mr. Shower. I, ah! That's right. I'm where I was going. So they got nowhere to run. Ah! <laughs> it's the WBOA morning show. Why is my seat hot? <laughs> I hate. You know, it should have been because my seat is all hot. And what is this smell on my microphone? Goodness gracious. Why is wet? Eucalyptus? This wet? Sound like somebody's spitting in this. No, you know. Man, something. I don't know. You know. All right, y'all. Hey, uh, it's the Talk Chicago 1690. I'm going to take a couple calls. I wanted to talk a little bit about school discipline. Linda and Patrick, y'all hold on real quick. Um, I don't know if you saw what's going on at um, uh, Lincoln Park where all the... The principals are getting fired, the coaches got fired, and then the next principal got fired, the replacement principal got fired for snatching or for grabbing a kid by his jaws. Um, Todd, I had a call from a good friend of mine who works in a school, is an administrator slash, um, he does, he works in schools. And he was like, can you help me find a job somewhere else? outside of the school. I don't care. He was like, I love the kids. Man, you can see the kids love him too. Right? You know how you know how like kids like the strict teacher? Like not the one that's assaulting you. But like the, the strict teacher that don't take no stuff and once the kids recognize that they can get away with it, they tend to gravitate towards that. They know who they can get away with. So they be like, oh man, don't even pull it because you know he ain't playing. Right. Well he was like, man, nowadays, you can't even pull a kid up. Now, I'm not saying you should jack him up. But I was thinking, like, man, there was a healthy dose of fear with my parents and my teachers. Right. And that healthy dose of fear, I'm not tripping because I used to get straight A's and all check marks. But I, I think if I, did, if I wasn't fearful, I would have probably done more. And I, I'm not saying that fear has to be the motivator, but there has to be a, you know. Yeah, fear a, works pretty well. Right. Some healthy fear. Some healthy fear. Todd, he'd be like, kids come to school high, smelling like, got it in their pocket, their eyes, blood, they got all type. They, Todd, remember we couldn't even chew gum in class. Oh, God. No. Remember if you got caught chewing gum, you might have to I put it on your nose. Sense. Right. Gum, candy. You got caught oh. eating. You bring a pop, pop to class, potato chips to class, boy, you was getting beat down. Nowadays, man, I remember when I went to St. Anselm's. I remember the first day of school, Miss Dunn, second grade. She was she had bought three batting ball paddles. You remember batting ball? Yeah. Bat, 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 bat. She was taping them together with masking tape, so that when you acted up, she was like, "Give me your hand." Wow. Uh, you'd be like, "Ooh, mm -hmm. that right?" But you knew 
you'd be like, man, I'm not tripping. Todd, you can't discipline kids. And I'm not saying, I, how, how do you deal with school discipline, man? Like, I mean, because if parents can't tell they, I mean, think about this. Kids curse at their parents in their houses these days, especially white kids. Hmm. Um, Todd, what do you do about school discipline? I don't know. You know, I, I, I came in the age where physical discipline was, was starting to be rooted out. You know, uh, you know Father Buzzmeyer grabbed Maurice Hale and banged him against the locker. And uh, I believe Maurice resisted. <laughs> he, he was more radical than most people. And, but a lot of, but, you know, what he had jug, and if you're acting up, I remember Mark Peroni had to put his, uh, uh, kneel down and put his nose on the desk for the whole class. Right, remember that? Yeah. Oh, remember yeah. you had to go stand in the corner, oh, yeah. go in the coat room. It was real, real discipline. It was real discipline. Yeah. And I'm saying, though, shoot, and you knew who was going to get it all the time. And there was a paddle right before I got to, to Ignatius. It had been, um, Put away. I'm gonna tell you. I by had a, a new thing. coach. The coach Mitchum, when we were freshmen, he had a, a oar, like a wooden oar. Yeah. And if you did not have your gym uniform, you had two options: run around. You had to, no, not run. You had to take a detention, or you took a swat. And usually, nobody wanted to take the detention because then you had to tell your parents. <laughs> so you took the swat. And you rarely forgot your gym uniform after taking that swat because it was like a straight up oar. Right. Like, when? One of them was good enough. Todd, I'm wondering, what, what, is there a healthy medium? Because what do you do when the kids be like, I ain't doing that? I mean, because nowadays I don't beat my kids or nothing. And sometimes they, you know, now I got a point where they know don't play dad, but you know, they, they feel like, kids feel like there's a, you got to negotiate. Yeah, they yeah. like. Well, why? What you mean, why? Cause I said so. The, Cause I said so without a, <laughs> like without a without a without a repercussion. I used to say that to my dad. Is this a democracy? <laughs> Not in my house. This and is a dictatorship. Say, well, he say no. <laughs> <laughs> I mean, remember you say I'm gonna run away. My mom be like, go ahead and run away. No, I'm gonna I never whoop said you. That. I'm gonna whoop you too. You be like, I was scared to run away because I thought I was gonna get a whooping for running away. Shoot, I knew where my food. Was. <laughs> I wasn't going nowhere. <laughs> Right, mm -hmm. I I seen people say, but I mean, what's the what's what's the enforcement for kids? Like, really, what can you really do? It's the time of Chicago 1690. We'll be back, and I think kids be knowing that. Like, what you really want? I, know, I, I mean, I know children who literally. I mean, I'm talking about this. Is, this was before they went to high school. Literally knew their right right and called DCFS. And say they they thought they were being uh they weren't being handled right. You know what I always told I told my kids, I'd be like they gonna take you away, not me. <laughs> <laughs> you ain't gonna have to care. Bye. Like they go, they might investigate me, but they gonna investigate they me. Not here. leaving you here alone. That's for sure. Right. <laughs> Man, I remember. So I had I remember though. So like I used to get like the whoopings the coat. I mean the. The pa I used to get hand paddle paddled on my butt. I remember one time, no, me and this dude named David got in trouble, and Miss Peters was a substitute, and she took us in the coat room and she made us take our pants down and our underwear down, and whooped us like that. And I feel like now, what look, was that? huh? Second. And I now looking back, I was thinking to myself. Oh, no. But that'd be real trouble. But my old man came up to that mug like you did, like I, and it was like I was scared to tell because I got in trouble. Right. And so you like man, but I was like this. That didn't seem right. She didn't touch me and all that stuff. Yeah. But it's like you made me take my pants and my my underwear down. And whoop, man, dude came up there the next day like man, he turned that bad boy. Up. We moved to Bolingbrook like the next year. <laughs> oh, this was public. Right, right, right. No, this was not public. Oh, no, this was St. Anselm's. Right, this right. was. That I remember he went in. Zare Foot was the was the principal. Miss Foot, and I never forget, man. He went up. I mean, and I didn't. Re I mean, he was like. It was almost like I was in trouble, right? Because he was so mad. 
He like, come on, let's go up there, get your first right. get the first. And I'm like, well, hold it, I didn't. Yeah, right. <laughs> Miss Peters got fired after that, though. I remember that. And she had kids that went there, too. Yeah, Mrs. Uh, Mrs. Hodges, the second grade, would uh, use the uh, the pointer, and she give you a whack on the butt. Oh, that pointer too, with the plastic, with the bl with the blood. I love the pointer. I wish we still had those. <laughs> like just for, I used to always want to do class just so I could have the pointer. Yeah, <laughs> with and the black tip on it. Yes, the black tip. That's yep. exactly right. Wood and right as wood. Miss Flowers would make you touch your toes and get a whack. Third grade. No, just touch your toes. Oh. I After remember that, sticking those in the corner. Yeah, well, when I got to Bolingbrook, there was no physical stuff. Except for gym class. But it was like a men's understanding. Like, <laughs> man, you can go get a detention if you want to and spend 30 minutes. Or you can come right on over here. Touch your toe. Wham! And he didn't, he, man, that moment. He didn't hold nothing back. <laughs> he held back. Because mm -hmm. if he, because, I mean... It was Jim Mitchum. He played for DePaul. He was like six eight, six nine. He's like the uh he's like the superintendent now oh. of the district. Black superintendent too. But like he had the respect of all the brothers. Right? Like all the brothers would be like, All right, Mitchum, I know, man. And even all the bad kids. Mm -hmm. That's good. We had a we had a uh, a gym teacher who was there for just a short time. Big guy, Gus Johnson, played basketball. I, I guess he played in Europe, but I don't think he got the respect he should have. But you know, black kids can be a little cruel, even on black people. Good man. That was Moses Montefiore, Milton. Man, I remember Muggs used to be like, I do. I remember I heard about uh, Montefiore all the way in Bolingbrook, man. Muggs used to be like, You do not want to go to Moses Montefiore. That's the bad kid's school. Mm -hmm. I feel like when they put the kids in the BD classes, they turned them into like a uh, organized crew of bullies. <laughs> like, it was like when they came out of there, they was like, what else y'all gonna do? Yeah, well, there was a, there's a movie way back in the, I guess it was probably the late 30s with um, was it, Pat O'Brien and and James Cagney and um, Humphrey Bogart. Angels with Dirty Faces. But the movie is about these two kids who are living in, you know, New York and one of those five boroughs. And, you know, it's all tenement slum type stuff. They do something, they're running, one gets away, one gets caught and goes to reform school. The one that gets away becomes a priest. The one that goes to reform school learns how to really be a criminal. <laughs> yeah, but that's what the movie was about, was that reform school wasn't reforming. It was it was just a breeding ground for you to learn how to be a better criminal. Which I think there, are, there was something to that in some ways. It is, man. I feel like reform school is, or like the out of home, it's like there's so much bad stuff that can happen that you could come out of there scarred works. Mm -hmm. Like I'm still traumatized by the movie Bad Boys. The one they shot in St. Charles with Sean Penn and old boy when he went to jail. Why, why was that traumatizing? Cause they raped that boy in the cell and then threw him over the um, threw him over the banister. And it's been so long since I saw that movie. Man. Uh, as a matter of fact, Gene Mullins is a, was an extra in it. Somebody else was telling me they were in it. He, Gene would always say, you see that guy right there? 
Well, I'm sitting next to him, but they cut me out. <laughs> Rise and shine. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Give me a call, 312-374-813. I got my co-host. He's back. I'm going to let him back in. It's Ty Stroger. Got to say what's up to the rest of the WVON Morning Show team. What's up to Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, as well as Sonya Escobar, the music conductor of the Soul Play. Um, but let me tell y'all, um, well, first of all, I got another subject I'm going to go to. Wait, but I want to take Linda that, and Patrick's call. I do want to say that I am Spartacus. Oh, because he died? Yeah. Because, uh, was it Kirk Douglas? Kirk Douglas? Kirk Douglas died at 103 years old. He was in a lot of movies I watched you know, back in the days where there was, you know, only like four channels. Mm. So, you know. Right. When I'm young, you know, you like to watch, watch the Vikings and Spartacus. Uh, he was in Exodus. The Strange Lives of Martha Eyes. That's the first movie he's ever in. That's a really good movie, too. Okay. I didn't see any of it. Um, I want to, um, Send a big shout out to everybody riding on the Cottage Grove bus right now. Uh, apparently, uh, Sonya Tompkins was on the Cottage Grove bus and somebody is playing the WVON morning show live on their speakerphone. And you know, wow. usually, you know I get, wow. usually I get mad when somebody is playing they, they speaker on the phone, on, like in a public space. But you know what? If you're on the Cottage Grove bus and you are listening to the WVON morning show, shout out to everybody black on their way to work on their way to do their thing with the man, however it is. You got the, one of our former super producers. Well, she's still a super producer. Mm -hmm. Sonya Topic is on the bus. Um, but shout out shout out to everybody on the Cottage Grove bus. Uh, Ty, uh, I want to encourage everybody, 312-744-3300. 312-744-3300. Uh, call Mayor Lori Lightfoot and tell her we want the red, black, and green flag, flag hung on city buildings. I talked to Alderman Jason Irvin yesterday. He said we gotta we gotta call the, the mayor. So I'm telling y'all call the mayor. Three one two three seven. I mean three one two seven four four thirty three hundred. Tell Mayor Lori Lightfoot that you want the red, black, and green flag hung on city buildings. Let's make those calls go all continue to go. Let's go, Linda. You on the top of Chicago sixteen ninety? Linda, I'm turn in. that radio down. I thought I did. You did. Okay, hold on. See? <laughs> I was going to come back to you in a second. Hey, y'all, I'm telling you, 312-744-3300. Linda, you okay? Yeah, I'm all right. All right, come on. Good morning, WVON Village. Good morning. Good morning. Listen, call all the black McDonald's. Somebody, if y'all don't see a black flag up there, they need to be reported. Ooh. All the black <laughs> McDonald's uh, restaurants Ooh. in the hood. Oh. Oh, hey, what's up, Derek? We need you, man. You know what? I ain't gonna call nobody out. I'm gonna just do it like this. Thank you, Linda. Hey, Derek. Derek. Barbara. Derek. Black McDonald Operators Association. Black McDonald's Operators Association. Can y'all hang the red, red, black, and green flags out there for us? Can y'all show us some love? I'm saying, like, I, I just think it's okay for black people not to be embarrassed to be black. 
No, exactly. And I don't think anybody that has a problem with you hanging that flag, you gotta ask what's their problem with. Because if they got a problem with you hanging that flag on the building, but we they didn't have a problem with us doing the work. It's funny because I was reading some of the comments J.B. Pritzker got. And like all the other people like, why we got to do some black blah, 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 you know what? And for every white person that wonder why we got to do a black flag, let me stop. I'm not going to go down. All right, Todd, I want to talk about something else that's on my mind. Is that yeah. okay with you? I am, I am with you. Okay. Todd, I want to talk about Trump's black strategy because I believe it's coming into full view for me. Um, you know, I think that Donald Trump, we'll move back up. I think everybody knows that if Democrats do not hold the black vote under 12%, if Democrats don't get, if, if Republicans get more than 12% of the black vote, Democrats lose. Would you agree? The National Republicans get more than 12% of the black Oh, yeah, I would say that probably. Right? right. So, and, and as we, as what's happening now, Todd, is that every pundit, everybody is saying that this thing hinges for the Democrats on who can get the support of black people. That's why, even though Pete Buttigieg ran out, he's, he's still, he, he came out of Iowa and he's raising all types of money. White liberals think we can elect a gay president, but black people don't necessarily. Right? Not necessarily. Um, I think the reason Joe Biden is viable in any way, shape, or form is because of his black support or the thought that he has the black support. That's really the only thing that's keeping him in. He's really holding on to pray that nothing happens because if he don't win South Carolina, it's a wrap. Yeah, you're right. right. South Carolina is his Waterloo. Um, what I think is happening, and then I looked at Trump's speech, right? I watched the State of the Union, albeit I watched the second the second day because I kind of fell asleep. I noted that he he acknowledged about five people, five people, that if a Democrat would have announced those people. We would have jumped up, we would have clapped, we would have been like, look at ourselves on TV. We would have been like, look at, we saw ourselves represented. Right? I'm, 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 bear me out. Yeah, I'm, I'm not going to do Okay. But then, and we saw people get honored, like, so it was funny to me yesterday, because I was watching, like, the comments of some of your fraternity brothers, who, were during the State of the Union, was talking smack about the speech and blah 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 and then they found out that the that the colonel that was raised to a brigadier general that was a Tuskegee Airman mm -hmm. was from their chapter. He's an alpha from Ta chapter. Shout out to the alphas at U of I. Right. Even though the city was what it is. Um, <laughs> and it got me to thinking because all the alphas was talking smack about Trump and then they realized that their guy had gotten on it and got a promotion. And he was a Tuskegee Airman. And so think about this. Think about black people calling Tuskegee Airmen sellouts. Right? Think about them calling people that we honor sellouts. Then think about when we saw the Super Bowl commercial and Centoya Brown was featured in the, in the commercial and everybody talked about the injustice that she faced. Right? And the whole narrative in everywhere else is about criminal justice reform and all of that. And what's happening is that Trump has got black folks. Trump has got loyal party black folks arguing against the common sense issues of regular black people. He's got black people saying, like, when I heard somebody black say, that the black the lady who was in the commercial was stupid for getting in the commercial for Donald Trump and would have stayed in jail. She should she should have stayed in jail before she did a com a commercial with Donald Trump. You know what that told me? What was that? Day? She had never been in jail, not even for never been in a in a in a holding cell. But it also said to me. No, I wouldn't even say that. I'm not about the holding cell. Okay, what would you say? Hey, if I can get out, yeah, you gotta do whatever you do. Egg, you egg, exactly. But again, what, what the, the, the black 
political punditry the black Kool-Aid drinkers are telling black people is she should have stayed. Think about the gravity of telling somebody you should have stayed in jail before you did a commercial. And so what I believe... That's just an emotional talk. It's emotional talk, but that's how we are. And so what I'm telling you is I believe that Trump is driving a wedge between middle and upper black people and black people that are having everyday challenges. So but... I will ask you, but if you knew somebody was not on the right page, but they helped you, would you do a commercial for them? Um, what's the right page? And if I, if I feel like if I had my issues addressed that I felt were the thing, yeah, I would. Yeah, I would. Like, if I, let, me, let me just be clear. Todd, there was a time in a previous life when I was incarcerated for some a short amount of time the 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 state's attorney came to me and said Maze jackson sign this paper that says you are a felon that you committed all these crimes don't plead it down just sign this and you can go home today and if he would have said and if you would cut a commercial and tell you how great i was going can i tell you what i would have did Cut the commercial because I wanted to go home. But I, I also think that when you think about the ex-offender community, when you think about all of these other constituency groups that really have a voice, shoot, the, 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 the political landscape, at least the activist landscape in Chicago is dominated by the ex-offender community. You tell them they should have stayed in jail. We're talking about a war on, a war on crime that affected black people but if Trump lets you out you should stay in jail. I'm telling you he's driving a wedge and the arguments that you're making sound crazy and direct to some black people. We'll be back and you can say your point when we come back. Stop More of the morning show with Mays Jackson coming up. So. I don't really have a point. I just have to push. No. Okay. No but I think that Trump is speaking to a specific First of all, he's driving the black turnout down. I don't think that there's going to be an overwhelming people number of people that will vote for Trump. But again, I I think of like Detroit. When freaking Hillary Clinton or Bernie Sanders is talking about taking care of immigrants um, and making sure they got all this stuff, and you're talking to auto workers in Detroit, black ones too, they like, man, ain't nobody trying to hear that. Would you like to see a complete list of Congressional Medal of Freedom winners? Yes. Just a couple of notes on there. Bill Cosby. They took his back. <laughs> Who gave it to him? Obama? Uh, I'm not sure. And um, look at Lauren Michaels. Lauren from, Michaels. Yeah, from Saturday Night Live. Uh, Saturday Night Live. Yeah. That's a comedy I can. Man, that's got the gay people. And a uh, sidebar, did you know Rush Limbaugh is producing the past 20 years as a black man? Just like, uh, I'm not surprised, and just like um, the number one sales person, uh, the, the person who led the sales team for uh, Don Imus is the, was the president of our fraternity. He said Don Imus did more for black kids, like anytime he asked them for anything. Yeah. He was like, whatever you want, like when we built our camp, before he even... Said the nappy. Yeah, before yeah. he did the nappy head thing. Yeah. Um, I'll put that for you. Right. Uh, it doesn't... Yeah. What's the name of that medal? Medal of Congress... I mean, uh, Presidential Medal of Freedom. Oh, yeah. Right. All I'm saying is, like... I mean, if I was... Man, and it's like... They, Trump went to the faces of criminal justice reform. You know, if I was Trump, I would do in every state. I would free because his his base ain't leaving at all. And right now, just so y'all know, Trump. If the election were held today, the polls say he's at forty nine percent. Right now, right now, now. If I was Trump, could you imagine if Trump said, "Free Larry, I'm a free Larry Hoover." So, after three months, when he gets killed, wouldn't make a difference to the people. That he's trying to won't make a difference if he gets killed. If they freed Larry Hoover, now all the people that was with all the black people that's gonna be hardcore Democrats, they stand. All the people that would float in, they ain't. Mm -hmm. 
Seriously. Like, so think about politi black political prisoners in what who you got in Detroit, who you got in Illinois, who you got in Texas that black people feel like, man. Now, start cutting into those things, all the things that Democrats refuse to do, because I know I ain't going to lose my base. So let me target not these sophisticated Todd Strogers. Let me target the low information black voters who just come in and vote D and then they be like, man, dude, they ain't got no real ties or vested interests, but they like, man, dude, free Hoover, right? So now think about those people who would go into the polls, who wouldn't, who would ordinarily go in and hit a D, but they was, I'm just saying. Now imagine he frees Hoover and Jeff Ford. I would say that something is up. Like, man, think about this. He freed Terry, Terry, uh, Terry Young, T Fly. You know, Obama didn't give one to Harry Belafonte. That's interesting. He did give one to City Court. He's like, can't do be too many light skinned Negroes. <laughs> I'm the light skinned nigga. Mm. You are tuned in to Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Maze Jackson. Got my co-host, Ty Stroger. Ty, hey, you know that was Renee when his dumb butt wasn't beating on Angela. Oh, I didn't know that, but... Oh, he was beating on Angela, Angela Wimbush? Why do you think you left? Oh, I didn't know why. But the Renee and Angela was a bomb group, man. Angela, and then that's when uh, Watchman J. Swoop came. Mr. B, right? He took some years. Yes, he did. All right, uh, <laughs> Ty... I believe that Donald Trump is driving a wedge between, he is successfully driving a wedge between regular black voters who are tired of getting the runaround from the Democratic Party. And people who aren't going to vote anyway? And people, and people who aren't going to vote anyway, or would be, that to me, those people who wouldn't vote anyway are the bump that came in for Obama, right? When Obama came, there was a spike in black votes. That was all those people. The Democrat, Hillary Clinton wasn't able to activate those and she lost. Now, Donald Trump, could you, Donald Trump to me seems to be strategically making Democrats fight against their own issues. So when he releases Centoya Brown that everybody was crying about and she gets out and says, thank you Donald Trump for doing what nobody else would, now, Centoya Brown, who was one of the faces of criminal justice reform, is now a sellout. She should have stayed in jail. Now, I'm telling you that's for people who, that's what white liberals are telling you. They would die for their cause. They should, you should. But we're talking about criminal justice reform. So even as you have criminal justice reform arguments, black folks ignore, the black people have to, have been taught, they have to ignore those black cases because they're going to be a challenge. Trump knows his base is not leaving him. So even if he lets out, like, could you imagine in, in a place like Illinois, if Jeff Ford let out, I mean, if if President Trump let out Jeff Ford and Larry Hoover? Yes, there would be people who would be like, no. But those people who would be like, no, were already going to be voting for, for the Democrat no matter what. Those other guys, would be like, dang. And even if they don't vote for Trump, they ain't gonna be that bump that the Democrats need. Now, how many times, have, how many states do you think there are black people that would get out of jail that need to get out or have been, let, have been put there improperly or could impact the vote? I was thinking, did you, like, I was thinking about uh, the fact that 
for instance, someone like Terry Young came home. He was like, uh, to the to the press, people said he was this bad guy and the government made him up. But if you were to go to his neighborhoods, if you would talk to all the elected officials that he dealt with, mm -hmm. you know what they would tell you? They would tell you that that brother helped a lot of people. He helped a lot of people. He helped a lot of people get jobs at the United Center, got jobs when they were, when the white folks was coming to take over the neighborhood, he was like, our people got to eat. And I just think that sometimes the black elite who haven't, and not even the black elite, because I don't want to sound like the those other guys, but the black middle class who has not maybe shared some of these experiences get to poo poo all the people that they're driving by but these are usually the same people that you poo poo and that's them negroes over there but it's those negroes over there that are the ones that are looking for a home because they haven't found it in the democratic party i told you if i was donald trump i would go to all the neighborhoods and be like i'm recruiting everybody for ice you ain't got a job you ain't got a job hey young black man you ain't got a job, you want to be an ICE? $70,000 a year, we're training you. Go to basic camp. I see the wedge. And I'm going to tell you who the, the real alliance, who I think could be the real alliance, working class black people and working class white people. I think that's the alliance. You get rid of the brown. The, the, like when Donald Trump got up and said yesterday, Oh, I believe in prayer and I'm not going and in prayer in school and I believe you should. Do you know how many black churches was like, uh, go, amen. He was talking to, he was talking to those people who the party has ignored and black folks have been taught to, y'all so busy touting the party line that you don't understand that the man is talking to your people. Let me go to the phone line. Cedric, you're on the top of Chicago. Oh, Maze, you out here cracking the code. Good morning, fellas, man. Good, Good morning. morning. How you guys doing? All hey, right. Good. Hey, look, uh, you know what Trump is doing? Trump is actually exposing the racism of the Democratic Party. He right sure now. is. And, and, and he's basically saying, you know what? Now, nah, this whole thing with um, the lady getting free from jail, now, that was on a federal level. And Roland came on the show yesterday, you know, the uh, afternoon show talking about, you know, what Trump is doing and he's doing it on the federal level. So the people that's getting thrown in jail on the local level, that's something different, which is what I agree. But he, but if the Democratic Party is trying to tear black people of Trump of stuff that he's doing on the federal level that the white Democratic Party is doing on the local level to black people across the nation. So that, that's not scary to us anymore. And, and he keeps talking to uh, uh, city black people when he needs to go in these rural areas in these states like Michigan, Minneapolis, uh, Wisconsin, and talk to those people. I don't know why they keep wasting our time talking to blue state blacks when they need to go to rural areas. Trump knows what he's doing. So, I mean, that's all I'm saying. It's going to be a long ride, but the Democratic Party don't get their act together. The same thing is going to happen again after happen in 2016. Wholeheartedly agree. You know what I wholeheartedly agree, Cedric? And it's like they haven't learned their lesson. They went and hired a Latino to be the boss of the party. Then they still talking about immigrants and all that stuff. And Todd, there's not one Democrat that has talked about issues that impact black people that is going, who are black people on the Democratic side fired up to go vote for? Not nobody as far as I'm concerned. We'll talk about it more when we come back after traffic and the weather. Who's the exciting Democratic candidate? For black people. Mm -hmm. I, for some reason, you think I'm some kind of cheerleader for the Democrats. <laughs> I ain't no cheerleader for the Democrats. Democrats haven't done anything except say, stick with us because at least we'll talk to you. Okay. I get that too. You and I. You and I. You uh -huh. and I. That's the you want to do. Okay, Todd, you got to come. Talk to that one. You. Talk to which one? Oh, 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 now I'm talking to that one. So I'll tell you, red, blue, camera two. <laughs> Me. Jackson. Uh oh. Claire wants me to do something for her. You. 
you and sometimes why Claire Eight thirty. Claire eats money. Well, first, don't have any money. I like all of those. Do do do. House, electric, electronic, like. Claire needs to eat. And they got uh, some good food at school. Mm -hmm. Now, back in my day, we had regular old. Yeah, just a little bit. Something to keep it going. Bum, bum. I mean, hey, I, I totally agree with Mace that the Democrats, uh, the black people are, are still being taken for granted. Yeah, I mean, mine was crazy last year. I mean, we have systematically been kept out of the large uh, society of finance and business. And uh, you know, nothing really changed. Now that the Democrats have really helped us enough. Now I've got to remember what the heck is the name? Oh, darn it. Candy Crush. How the heck did I get the Candy Crush? Why is it even on my phone? I don't even remember the name of the app. What is it? What is it? What is it? Oh, hey, 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 she won't be okay. Not gonna work. <laughs> you know, okay. Oh yeah, I think so. You gonna talk to a Cliff today? Okay, yeah. Well, you know, Cliff's a good man. What we gotta do? That's right. The speech. Then after the speech, like the react, I feel like she knew that he. Right. Yeah. It was over. Yeah. He won. Yeah. You lost. Yeah. Stop. And, 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 and she and, felt frustrated. And, 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 she, and she said the, the things that he was hitting home on are all the things that the devs were trying to do. And he was able to do That's it. That's my point. That's what the psychiatrist said. The psychologist said. You two are living in a white man's world. No. you. What you are Especially doing is you, <laughs> you live in, in a, it's like Ty can't shake his democratic leanings. Like, Mace has, he's got me all wrong. No, it's not. It, it like, has nothing to do with Democrats for me. What, am I some kind of judge here? I, I mean, you're like, no, you're, 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 you're both are bleeding your case to me. I, I'm like, I, a judge, dude, I'm not having none of this. It goes back to, I know a snake when I see it. I wouldn't trust that man with my children. My I, children I mean, but I'm saying, how hand. many snakes have you seen? Shit, you, you live next. You worked with Forrest Claypool. You work with snakes. That's how I know one when I Right, one. okay, but guess what? They all elected. I'm hey, saying, who I, I, the key is to be with the winner. I just did this. Oh, it was a sad day. Hey, the what's the uh, what's the yeah. app uh, to put Crazy Rock is money on oh, players? Uh, uh, really? Where did Crazy years. Wally go? Ten years. Okay, yeah, I, I couldn't find it. Did he? The owner, the owner died. Okay, thanks. Yeah. yeah, about ten years. ago. I wish I wanted to buy his house. I love the fake no, palm tree. I can barely get in the parking lot. I thought that was the best. <laughs> All right. I just was All like, right. man, look at that driveway. It's so crazy the things that you think are such a big deal that I could do now. Did you, like go, did you ever go to, to do that? What was that other club on 53 higher, higher up towards like Naperville? Yes. Like uh, Galaxy Club or something like that? No, no, so you're talking about the one that, that was like a bunch of different yeah. restaurants too. Yeah. It, it's off of 75th. Yeah. There was one that was in Downers Grove that I went, that we used to go to. You're taking me to the point of no return. Man, it's funny when I play those songs. Carrie be looking like, like there's a. I got a. I, I love expose. I loved all of that. What was the other one that was expose and there was the cover girls? Oh my God, the cover girls. Expose and the cover girls. And then that was like the same time like Bobby Brown came out with. Uh, that Bobby Brown was. Not, he got, was just got paid. 
No, that was that was eighty nine. Yeah, but that wasn't Bobby Brown. Brown. That was uh, Johnny Kemp. Mm. Bobby Brown was eighty nine. My senior year, my pro- I'll never forget. My prerogative. I was, man, I was I at Donald MVP Watson's too. house. Donnie and Watson. He, Donald Watson, and he played my prerogative the first time, and I was like, "Oh." Donald Watson. I know Donnie Watson. Donald, but we all he's call black. him Donnie. Yes. Nice. He's black. Yeah, he's black, but. Did, did he, he go to Bolingbrook High School? For the Bulls? Huh? Did he used to be the timekeeper for the Bulls? No, 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 no. Mm-hmm. Donnie Watson used to give him 20 bucks and he'd go, I'd go sit in the first 20 rows and watch Michael Jordan all year long. He's like, kids give him 20 bucks? Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> he'd open the door for me and there I was. Man. Yeah, that's funny. It was great. Yeah, that never happened again in this world. Oh! Sing it, boy. You are tuned in to the Talk Chicago 1690 AM. I'm your host, Mays Jackson. Got my co-host, Todd Stroger. Todd, I think Todd, Donald Trump is driving a wedge in the black community. I think he's driving a wedge between the people who refuse to see the inequities of the Democratic Party and how they've treated black folks and those people who have been, in some ways, shape, or form, left behind beyond the fact that they've been ignored by the Democratic Party. I think that he is really playing a game with economics. People who, it's like sometimes I think there is a lack of understanding between the groups in our community. Uh, Summer Summer Coleman on Facebook always says, them ninjas over there, right? We have like them ninjas over there that we'd be like, you know how, and then it's like Chris Rock said, it's black folks and it's Negro, and it's, right? That's I right, think and that, he loves black folks. Well, I think Donald Trump is speaking to the other half of them. And the I, other half doesn't vote. Uh, the other half doesn't vote, which is what he probably needs, a combination of them not voting, and if they do, having a three to, you know, like a, five, a ten to two split. Mm-hmm. Right, because this is not new. Right, but but I'm suggesting that it's effective because I think that even as you tell people, there's like I just keep thinking about all the black people who was saying that that uh, excuse me, it was Alice Johnson, not Centoya Brown. Alice Johnson, the senior citizen black woman, should have stayed in jail rather than cut a commercial for Trump, who got her out of jail that everybody was asking for her to get released. So we was all saying it was unfair she'd be there. Then when he got her out, then we like, you dummy. And I think that's, this, it's, a, it's not a common sense argument. It's a white common sense argument that they got black people trying to make. Um, and I, I guess I don't pay enough attention. Because yeah, you I, probably I, don't. Because that's a big, I mean. I don't even care that he let her out. See? He let her out good. And and my point is But that's not I'm not giving him any any great credit for, for doing so something. So should we give any other he, he should have done. So should we give any um should we give any elected official credit for the things that they were supposed to do for setting things that were wrong, right? This is the things that he does affect one to five people. I think that's cool, but so when I, he passed I, I the first step act, so when the first step act, see, so do you do you see this? So you ain't got Jack Bone from President Obama. The people I don't care that, about President Obama. He's not the president. Okay, that's so, the past. So Todd, so what? So what have we gotten from the Democrats? Give it to me. Come on, talk to me. Talk to me. The same thing we got from the Republicans. Okay, so there it is. See my point? See how we? See how we just? I didn't have to raise my voice. Like, see, this is the thing with Mays Jackson. 
I tell y'all before, I'm not gonna argue over which white boy is which 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 white boy you is just racist. Did. No, you said that, not me. No. I, I say they're all racist. Sonia? No. They're I'm, all I'm racist. Not just kidding, sorry. <laughs> they're all I mean, to me, I don't see no difference between Donald Trump and Bill Clinton. Right? I'm saying. Right? I'm just saying. So you'll say, Mace, oh my God, how could you say that? And I say, who did the crime bill? Nah, that's okay. We forgot about that. Right? I don't see no difference between George Bush and Donald Trump. As a matter of fact, George Bush, in my estimation, actively hurt black people. Remember, Katrina? Remember? Good job, Brownie. Right? Yet and still, as you have the conversation about criminal justice reform, and your poster children for criminal justice reform get let out. Y'all be like, nah, that's okay. I think you're having an argument against common sense that other people see. Rick, you're on the top of Chicago, 1690. I think Trump is playing a very smart game, and that's, that's hard for me to say about him, uh, what he's doing. He, yeah, he's throwing shade on the Clinton crime bill, and he, with one swoop, puts this person out. He say, well, uh, Todd say, well, they don't vote. Well, they talk. They got family. And people like that. And he's only got to bleed off a, a certain percentage. But look at the other things. He highlights that the Tuskegee Airmen, uh, Brigadier General. And I, I don't know. If you're retired, does he get a promotion in his pension? Uh, well, uh, check this out, though. Hold on, Rick. Because you know what? The, let me tell you how the, the liberals done got black folks. They got black folks now dogging a Tuskegee Airmen. Think about that. They got black people. You, you White liberals got you saying... Damn that Tuskegee Airman who fought for our freedom. Go ahead, Rick. I'm sorry. And, and then and then and then you go the symbolic thing. I thought this was some little ship that he was naming after Dory Miller. This is the biggest aircraft carrier that we have. So he's doing the things. He's highlighting the fact that the Democrats has nothing. When he ran the last time, he said, "What did you really get? What do you got to lose? What did the Democrats really do for you?" And now the uh, uh, black is the new N-word of the Democratic Party. They wouldn't even discuss our issues, not talk about what you want to do. And and Todd is is, is the problem because he's a, he's being a leader. Oh, those people aren't going to vote anyway. They talk, exactly. it will have an effect. They don't have to vote. They just sit home. What do you think voter suppression is? He's putting man. This is nothing no new. As, as I have made, this is a, a, a tactic the Republicans use all the time. But and if it works no. again, I don't care if they use it all the time. If it works again, and you have and, 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 but, but, but you know, I don't care either. My thought is, if you keep a president who is going to spout racism, you are endangering black people. That's my only problem with the guy. I, all the rest of that stuff, I can't control. But I don't want to see white supremacy. Given the thought that you can do whatever the hell you want. Okay. So. Your, your philosophies are not hurting people on that lower level. They talk, they're dealing with bread and butter issues. And this will hurt the Democrats. We've gotten away from bread and butter issues. I've, I've worked bread on bread and butter issues all my life. So, you know, you can tell me I don't know what I'm talking about, but I've done it. You ain't, you, you ain't feeling like the poor folks, Ty. You ain't hurting. No. You ain't and, and that's exactly why I kept that hospital system running. So, don't be telling me what I do. I ain't mad about you. You did a good job. But you I ain't mad about you either. Life. Even though you're making me sweat, it's hot in here. Hey, let me tell y'all something. Let me just tell you. You know what, uh, Rick? I think, Rick, can I tell you something? I think that you hear exactly the same thing that I'm hearing, right? It's like we've written off a whole chunk of our community, right? And, and it's, it's, it's the, that chunk of people that you're writing off that ain't going to vote anyway are the people that propelled Obama are the same people that were part of the demise of Hillary Clinton. And my thing is nothing has changed in this time period. Nothing. And it's like, so nobody is saying that. Yeah, there were young people that were the demise of Hillary Clinton. Uh, but then you think they're not going to be the demise of Hillary Clinton again? I mean, not Hillary Clinton, of, of whoever the, if it's not Bernie Sanders, after what happened in Iowa, and there's a the thought that it was rigged, they're going to do the same thing. I'm not disagreeing. And I, I don't know why. I, I am not the, the voice of the Democratic Party. I don't think you are. I think what you know. When I was uh, on the DNC, they wouldn't even send me a notice when the meetings were happening. See? So. <laughs> See, but I'm saying that was the, that was the Democrats disrespecting you. And to two sides to your point, here's my point. They are white supremacists, and I'm saying I'm not committing to nobody. But if I'm looking at the landscape right now, 
The landscape tells me that the winner is going to be the president. And what they're going to tell us to do is sit out government for another four years. So they told us to sit out eight years during Obama. Then they, go, they said, we're going to resist and sit out these four years. And when the fool win again, they're going to say, sit down and white folks still going to be getting rich. It's the top of Chicago 1690. Carol, what's your, what's your, what's your comment? Good morning. Good morning. Good morning. Thanks for taking my call. I just want to say, this is not the first rodeo dealing with black people, dealing with the racists in the White House or in uh, government. Uh, how does Trump explain the Central Park Five? Everybody remembers that. He's a racist. How does he explain the birth of movement against Barack Obama? And just two days ago, he gave the Medal of Freedom to Rush Limbaugh, who is one of the most racist uh, announcers, one of the most racist people in, uh, in radio, who did everything he could and still does it. He said that, uh, you know who, des the quote, you know who deserves the posthumous Medal of Honor? James Earl Ray. We miss you, James. God speed. And another quote, Rush Limbaugh said the NAACP should have riot rehearsal. They should get a liquor license and practice robbery, end quote. He got two days ago, Trump had his wife pin the Medal of Freedom on Rush Limbaugh. Hey, 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 Carol, 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 no one is saying that Trump is our friend. And I'm telling you, you telling me all the bad stuff about Trump, and I, I, I'm, I'm clear that all the white guys that have been in the president's office have been racist, whether they said it out loud or whether they did it behind the scenes. Now, my question, Carol, is what are you saying that the Democrats have done to offset that? To make not 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 you intellectual who has read and sat down and listened to every Rush limbo statement, I'm talking about the guy that's listening to, dub to another radio station. Look, stop Chicago. Carol, you hold on because we'll take your call when we come back. More it's of like the morning he, show. Like who are we talking to? That's all I'm saying. It's like he ain't trying to win you. You don't try to get the. I need those potential people. What's that? There's something that I, I think was good of Trump. Education Department forgives $322 million in loans to help historically black colleges recover from hurricanes. Get the money back, you stupid black people. Which hurricane was that? Hurricanes Katrina and Rita. He's going all the way back to Katrina and Rita. I remember Rita. I'm just saying. That is, how stupid of him. The damn Katrina victims. No, I think that's a great thing. But Grace, I couldn't print you that. It's thirty some pages all over. Okay. 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 It's like I, I'm gonna Google break out my milk crate tonight, man. You got me singing all these. Man, I, you know what? 88, songs, man. Can I tell you? I wanted to. Man, one night me and Carrie came home from a a, a gala, and we were tipsy. And we started playing like some song. I mean, it turned into like a three hour just YouTube, uh -huh. just sitting there playing songs like, damn, remember this? You got that? Yeah. Yeah. You're taking me to the point of no return. Oh, you want to put this in your bag, Todd? Or you want me? Yeah, I mean, we can go. No, put it in your drawer. All right. I put it in my bag and I may forget my bag. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. No problem, no amigo. Da da da. Sing with the harmony of liberty. Let our rejoicings rise High as the glistening skies Let us march on oh, oh, me. Let it resound Loud as a rolling sea My favorite part is when 
and they'd be like, sing a song. You ain't ready, Todd. No, I'm not ready. I only sang that song for like two thirds of my life. <laughs> Did you give acknowledgement to the men of Phi Beta Sigma for that? <laughs> no. Well, I will give acknowledgement to the man of Phi Beta Sigma who wrote <laughs> Sing a song full of. of Latin American students where it used to be the Latin American Organization of Students so it could be Lasos. <laughs> but, you know, I don't belong to that group so who am I to say? Fox is going hard for black people, man. They be, having, a lot more, of black folks? They be having more black guests. Who is that, brother? Hit that dog tiz- tizzle. Heart Radio ad. Shoop, 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 shoop. Shoop, shoop. I wanna be free. Man, I'm about to snap. Free. I wanna be free. Free, free. All the time. Wow, wow. You are tuned into Talk Chicago 1698. You don't know nothing about that boy. Shoot, 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 shoot. I want to be free. Free! Hey, Todd. Did you know that the Education Department forgives $322 million in loans to help historically black colleges recover from hurricanes? That was Hurricanes Rita and Katrina. Uh, That would affect the XU! XU, the school behind the billboard. You think they saved the billboard? (laughs) Uh, But the question then becomes, Todd. I mean, that was for black people too, right? I know. We should. You know what? We should cut that out. Though I'm gonna stop. Hey, um, Todd. Okay, so let me do this real quick. I wanted to point out. Let me just show you how disrespectful. Not disrespectful. How I'm gonna take Carol. I'm coming back to you. But I just want to point something out to you. Remember, I told you about Black History Month. So did you know it was Black History Month and I told you Equality Illinois had the, the gay their gala on the first day? Yeah. You know I was talking about asking Mayor Lloyd Lightfoot to hang red, black, and green flags in the city hall? Yes. I'm asking y'all to call 312-744-3300. You know a, 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 a listener just went down to city hall, sent me pictures. You know what she got hanging up for no Black one. History Month? Right. Chinese lanterns. Oh, for uh, I don't movie. care. <laughs> I, was, I don't care. I, think I'm just saying. Seriously, y'all. Can we please get on the phone? 312-744-3300. I just think that remember when I told y'all about the black total pole? I'm telling you if we put the black so the black the total pole works like this. White people at the top of the total pole. Right. Chinese and, and Asians in the next spot. Latinos, no, excuse me. White people, now it's a new category, gay people. Then Asians, then Latinos, then everything else they could think of, then black people. Right? Right. So even during Black History Month, the gay community decided they hold their biggest event on our day, on our month, to kick off our month. Now when you go to City Hall, there wasn't even a thought to, to respect black folks. 
Right? That wasn't even a thought. That's my point. That is my point. That in Black History Month, somebody said, by George, I've got it. Instead of red, black, and green, let's hang up some Chinese joints. Now, I'm not even saying in conjunction with. I'm saying they, right now, if you go to City Hall, you're going to see Chinese lanterns hanging everywhere. What? What? We got we don't, don't we have a black mayor? Wouldn't that be at the forefront of your uh, frontal lobe? I think we've already uh, we've already discussed. Somebody tell the white people that. All right, Charles. He is not in that group. Mm. All right, y'all. Take a moment. Share. Oh, well, I was gonna say share the broadcast, Carol. <laughs> anyway, I'm sorry. I know we was talking about Trump. I know you were telling me about all the racist stuff that Trump did, and I told you I don't argue about which white boy is more racist because I feel like they all are. What I would like for you to do, Carol, in the in this process is tell me what do we have on the other side besides the boogeyman of racism? Oh, we have uh, the Democrats impeached Trump. They impeached him. And they lost. Four, no, no, but 47 <laughs> of them, 47, every last Democrat senator voted to convict and remove Donald Trump. Thank, Thank you, Carol. I, this is my point, y'all. This is exactly my point. Carol is talking to the. She is doing the epitome of preaching to the choir, right? Donald Trump already know he got the average black folks. The 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 he impeached, right? He didn't he impeached just like so that same thing you said about Clinton. But so what? He got acquitted. He beat the case, right? Every time I talk about Donald Trump and I ask, I talk about that. I say, what have the Democrats done for us? You know what y'all tell me? They impeached Donald Trump. I just told you $322 million went to uh, forget. $322 million in debt has been forgiven. I'm not advocating for Donald Trump, but I, I think that Democrats need to stop thinking that they got us. And I think, like, I think they should be concerned. I think everybody black person should be, I'm undecided. I'm undecided. I'm undecided between the racist between active racism and passive racism. Right? Because, I mean, still nobody. So, could y'all do me a favor, though? Since they got Chinese lanterns all over City Hall for Black History Month, can y'all call 312-744-3300? 312-744-3300. Now, were there lanterns green, black, and red? No, they're red mm -hmm. lanterns for Chinese. Oh, no compromise. No compromise. No. You know, they could have played it off. They could have been like when the Chinese, you know, they could have said... The Oh, think about that. Yeah, we can't win for losing. Yeah, but meanwhile, I know Trump's a racist. Like, I bet if I call, I, you know, we're going to see if we can get the president to get us a red, black, and green. Oh, I'm about to call the White House. I'm about to call the White House. I'm going to show y'all pandering for real. Hey, for Jennifer Thompson in the newsroom, for Miss Sonia Escobar representing African American College Alliance mm -hmm. for. Uh, my, that's my co-host. For Ty Stroger, who rides along with us every once in a while. I am the host of the WVON Morning Show asking every day what's in it for the black people. And if you don't like it, you can still tell them. May said, we out of here. Peace. The talk of Chicago and the voice of the nation. Yeah. 1690 WVON oh, Berwyn. shit. You got him, right? Yep. And I Call him. Oh, Call him. Oh, 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 Call him. Oh, 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 I would just like to have a toolbox to just wreak havoc. Like